Well, hey everybody. It is uh, Thursday, October 17th. It's time for more Legendary. It's time for more tournament games. We are in week four of the fall 2024 tournament and uh, we're gonna reach the halfway point very soon. Um, I'm very excited to play this week's setup and go over this week's setups. Hello everyone. Um, thank you for playing in the tournament and coming to watch this. Um, I have put together 11, hopefully, really fun setups for you guys this week. I'm glad you have seemed to give positive feedback on the ones you've seen so far. So what I want to do is take a moment to go over all the setups for this week, give you a couple thoughts about how I put them together, and then play one of them. Um, you, you did vote on which one I'm going to play, so most of you already know. But uh, let's talk about the setups real quick, and then we'll get to playing, shall we? Uh, by the way, hints that Weapon X news is coming pretty soon. We got another teaser. We saw an image of uh, the Romulus Mastermind, so I'm really hoping that it releases pretty soon. Yeah, Kang of the Hill did not win. I was preparing for that one to win because it was ahead for a while, but it got overtaken. But that one does look very fun. I, I might play that one on my own. I did give, I did choose heroes for that setup too. I'm not sure I want to dispose those just yet, but I chose two heroes. I think are going to work really well in that setup. I'll let you know after I think the results come in for the week what I would have chosen because. I think they were really good choices. I was more confident about my King of the Hill choice, King of the Hill choices, than I was about this one. But anyway, um, let me go ahead and show you the setups for this week, and we'll talk about those real quick. Uh, beginning with pod number 35, the Shawshank Abomination. Let me actually zoom in a little bit more. Bam, all right, cool. So obviously, this one plays with a scheme that keeps heroes face down in the HQ and a mastermind that has abomination, ultimate abomination, cares about printed values. So this is going to be a bit of a balancing act on do you want to reveal cards to recruit? Um, all three of these heroes have attack on almost all of their cards. So if they were all face up, this would be very hard against Arnim Zola because of all the abomination. Gorgon also has abomination on the hero side of things. Of course, we also have a human rebellion that also works with abomination. The Ravagers is in there messing things up. We got a bit of... Uh, resurrection there so this one's going to be all about how do you balance when to uh save characters from being imprisoned and when do you not because that makes it easier to hit the characters with abomination i look forward to seeing what is selected for this one moving on to simply sinister this is the one i'm playing today so i'll come back to this in a second it's the one you voted for got a few more votes than all the others and it looks fun Moving on to pod 37, monsters versus aliens. The theme here is self-explanatory. A bunch of monsters versus a bunch of aliens. I shifted this around a lot because this one's more thematic than actually based on mechanics, but there are some mechanics here. There's a lot of attack here in the hero deck, and you do have some resurrection here, some feasting, um, and the spider effect to do some wall crawling. So you can get a lot of deck thinning and early cards in your hand. Keep that in mind, especially when it comes to defeating enemies for the Clash of the Monsters Unleashed. This one will sneak up on you. And Spider Queen puts her uh, henchman back in too. All right, moving on to Kang of the Hill, the one a lot of people wanted to win, but didn't quite make it. Uh, pod 38, I got to use some uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp here. We got Kang Quantum Conqueror warping reality into a TV show. And obviously here I'm playing with the fact that this scheme changes the size of the city and moves the spaces around with a mastermind that has Conqueror. So if a uh, city space doesn't exist, let me actually zoom out just a little bit. I can't, I can't only do it this much. All right, it's fine. So if uh, a city's HQ space is destroyed, come back to that for a second. So you can't patrol city spaces that don't exist. They still have their names. When the cities move along, you might lose some spaces, which might lose some Conqueror. Then the fallout of the timeline variants that can come that do not ambush when they're in the multiverse space. But once they come into the city, they will ambush, and then once the city space is destroyed, it also destroys an HQ space with this scheme, which means that the a haunting villain here enters a city, ignoring any other ambushes. They just leave the HQ. So a lot of things going on here. Um, you got Scott Lang, Elsa Bledsoe, and a Black Panther. And I, I also made my choices for this one, too, like I said. Uh, there's some really cool things these heroes can do together, especially when you plug some other things in. So I hope you guys figure that one out. And speaking of fun things to figure out, we got Pod 39, Find Over Shatter. Uh, we've got Exodus and the Korvac Saga slash Korvac Revealed. So obviously Exodus is a mastermind. You need a lot of recruit for it to shatter. And Korvac is a mastermind as a scheme. You can actually hit as a villain to win the game half the time. Kind of half the time. How are you going to play that? I put in two Messiah Complex characters, Sephiroth Cuckoos and Warpath and Gamora here. Got some strong heroes in the hero deck. But you also got the Sinister Clones filling things up. Acolytes are no pushovers either. And the Heralds of Galactus are one of the toughest villain groups there are. 
from the early days especially. This one is going to be interesting to see. Then we've got one of my favorite titles of the week, Mental Organism Designed to Own a Kaleidoscope. we got MODOK Uniting the Shards. Unite the Shards can get away from you if you're not keeping track of the supply of 30 shards. You don't have any Guardians of the Galaxy Heroes set. If you do choose some, keep in mind how you're using those shards. But you do have Cytoplasm Spikes. You might lose some heroes you don't expect. Uh, feasting also with No Name Brood Queen, but you can set up for that. Iron Fist here helps with Outwit for MODOK and the Intelligentsia. So I set that up for you. How will you play into that? Moving on to the Life Aquatic with Hein Zemo. We got Baron Heinrich Zemo and the Fountain of Eternal Life. Yes, Fountain of Eternal Life gives all these villains uh, Fateful Resurrection. There are eight twists and five strikes, so those 13 cards in the villain deck revealed will bring things back in. However, Heinrich Zemo is not the toughest mastermind. Masters of Evil do capture a lot of bystanders. The Domain of Apocalypse has some very, very helpful uh, effects, which you can use again once you fight them and they resurrect. So that's a plus for you. Cave Killers are a bit tricky. You have to keep in mind you might need to discard cards um, that don't actually send these away because of the resurrection. You got Thanos, who also plays with bystanders in a bit of a different way. Captain America 1941 and Wiccan. We got to use the Captain America 75th set in here. Both Secret Wars sets and Civil War. A big pool of heroes here for you. You guys asked for more big boxes, and I gave them to you this week. We've got 42 Kree checking. I hope you guys like that title. This one just uses Core and Guardians of the Galaxy, but I think it's going to be interesting because the Supreme Intelligence and the Supreme Star Force work with shards. You've also got MGTOWN Bank Robbery, where enemies get buffed up by bystanders. Um, so you get buffed by shards, buffs by bystanders, and you got Hydra, which is um, do you want to hit them to play extra cards because the scheme kind of already does this. I gave you Groot and Thor and Hulk. All three of them, I think, work really well together to give you kind of a head start, and I wonder how you're going to fill up those gaps. Next, we've got Wilson's Discs. We got Kingpin subjugating with obedience disc. Two things that need recruit or work with recruit. Also got uh, Streets of New York as well that also can be bribed. We got Quicksilver, Nightcrawler, and Korg. Uh, you got some uh, potential for hyperspeed. You got Nightcrawler who can teleport, give you some recruit or attack. I look forward to seeing how that one goes for you. Mandarin's Rings, depending on which ones come out when, could help you out. We've got Demons in the Outfield. I did use Superhuman Baseball Game here, but I did want to make a setup for the Superhuman Baseball Game. That wasn't impossible. And here's why it's not impossible. Because while uh, the scheme does play a bunch of extra cards and shortens the city, you do have the Hood, who does have one location in his Hood's gang. Subterranea, who usually will come back for a second helping by, re by uh, burrowing into the streets. But with this scheme, there are no streets, so they'd never burrow. You've got the rival overlords, which when most of them escape, they become masterminds, which means they do not count against the evil wins condition. They don't count against villains in your, uh, they don't count against your points at the end of the game. And then you got Hydra Base, which are just locations. They don't, they can't escape. They don't take up any spaces. You can only have three in the city at any time because there's only three city spaces. So I gave you a bit of a break there with how tough this scheme is. You've also got Hellcat, Warlock, and Killmonger Spec Ops. Some, uh, some great heroes here. I really look forward to seeing the results of this one. I think you guys will do fine. And the very last one, Pod 45, I pray the stones my soul to keep. We've got Lady Deathstrike who does pray, and we've got Sacrifice for the Soul Stone. You're going to be KOing some non-great heroes here. Keep that in mind. I did give the Infinity Stones, put, give you the Infinity Stones in this setup. You got Sentinel Squad one, so lots of KOs on top of that, plus the Reavers. I gave you Wand Envision, Human Torch, and Black Cat. Black Cat is actually better than she looks in this setup. I'll let you figure out why, and um, that's all I'm going to leave it with. So a lot of uh, sets we didn't get to use last week. A lot of Infinity Saga there. And I hope you guys have fun with these. Let me jump back up to what I'm playing today, which is going to be Simply Sinister. No, I hope you can get the theme. It's a bunch of cards with Sinister in them. Uh, we got Sinister 6, 2099 from the newest set, Sinister Ambitions. I love the name of Pod44. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, by the way, I did say in the, in the Discord, I wanted to go lean heavily into the theme and go with... Uh, Strange's Demons and Demons of Limbo for the villain groups, but that would have made the setup too hard. So just keep that in mind that there was some thematic reason for the setup before I changed it up. Anyway, back to Simply Sinister. We got Sinister 6, 2099 from the newest set, and the Sinister Ambition Scheme from Secret Wars Volume 2, which puts the Ambitionist cards that you usually use for playing as the Mastermind into the special rules. <laughs> Love that reference, Trey. I gotta do a Parks and Rec reference, one of these titles. What am I gonna do? Um, 
We'll see. All right, villain deck is Sinister Six because the 2099 Sinister Six can always lead an Alchemax or a Sinister Six group. We got X Men 92 as kind of the X Men side of things, referencing uh, uh, Mr. Sinister uh, cloning them. And then we got, of course, the Mr. Sinister clones here as well. In the hero deck, we've got Spidey 2099, Silk, and Warpath. I put Warpath in two setups this week, but I think he fits those really well. Of course, Silk here is the only two-cost mechanic Spidey here, but each of these have two-cost uh, cards as well. We don't do a final blow because this is an adapting Mastermind, but the cool thing about them is there are six of them, and we'll go over that when we go over the uh, Mastermind. Now, uh, in the second edition of the core set, we are getting two Sinister groups. We're getting a rename of the Spider-Foes as the Sinister Spider-Foes, and we're also getting a new group, a Sinister Syndicate, and my guess is that we're going to have a Dr. Octopus Mastermind, but we haven't actually seen that yet. So I kind of want to redo this when Second Edition comes out with even more Sinister stuff. Also, I wanted to use villains for the Sinister Six villains uh, allies, but we couldn't fit that in here. Anyway, here are my choices. Now, looking at how I put this setup together, I definitely want to go with a two-cost spider mechanic thing. I put Soak in here. There's others available in these sets. Something Sinister this way comes... Yeah, I thought of that, but um, I didn't use it. <laughs> but that was pretty good. Um, I also thought about using Dexter in the title because it's the opposite. But anyway, I'm not going to spend too much on the title. Um, I want to do a two-cost mechanic spider thing. So my first choice is Symbiote Spider-Man from Paint the Town Red because he's one of the best. If you're strictly going uh, two-cost spider mechanic, Silk is one of the best too, but she's already there. Now, because I want to do the two-cost spider mechanic... I want the other side to not do that because I want all the two costs to be focused in one place. At first, I thought I might want to use the Stepford Cuckoos because they're very good. They need two and three costs, but then I worried about having to split the two costs up between decks because they want both two and three. Then I decided, oh, I should go for three. I'll go for M. I can focus on three, but some of these cards that aren't two are costs that aren't three. So then I decided I'm going to lean into synergies here and lean into the faded future that spidey 2099's got so i went with ravish 2099 for my second hero when i did play the 2099 set for the first time he really impressed me uh, it'll work well with some of warpath's cards some of 2099's cards and if i can get a faded future deck going they get really powerful real fast and then i can leave the other side to do the two cost thing so that's what i went with symbiote spider-man and ravish 2099 with that, let's go ahead and go over our mastermind and scheme and get some predictions in. I look forward to playing this. Thank you guys for voting for this one. Hey, I'm back to the board. So let's get everything here. Our mastermind today is the Sinister Six 2099. It is an adapting mastermind. Let's start with this side here. Bam. So we got Electro 2099 as the first card here. Like I said, always leads any Alchemax or Sinister villain group. And the, for setup, I adapt to pick a random mastermind from this pile. And then we'll figure out what the master strike is after I adapt. But they all have different ones. You have to take out all six of them to win. And uh, they do different things and have different attack values. I love this. Um, no cyber mod on these guys. And let's look at this scheme. This scheme is one I don't play that often. It's Sinister Ambitions. Six twists add ten random ambition cards to the villain deck. Except for this one, I gave you the card so that everybody has the same ones. Special rules. Thanks, Montex. I think so too. Uh, special rules. Ambition cards are villains with their printed attack. Add plus one attack for each twist stacked next to the scheme, which is just, um, well, you'll see. Uh, they are worth four VP. Whenever an ambition villain escapes, do its ambition effect. Twist one to five. Stack this twist next to the scheme. Play another card from the villain deck. Twist six. Each ambition villain in the city escapes. Evil wins when four ambition villains escape. That's a lot less than it seems. This can go quickly, especially if you have a lot of twists. Some can chain. Um, but uh, if I get an early chain, I just stack twists and play other cards. I can play other twists. But then they get super powerful at the beginning. So we will see. Um, yeah, I'm glad I got to sneak in some of 2099. Um, because you guys were so um, nice in being flexible with the Swiss format in the poll last time, I get to move things around and I get to include more sets. And I think it's really working out. Uh, and there's another factor there that I'll talk about in a little bit. However, I've gone over the whole thing. Let me go ahead and start predictions. How do you think my game is going to go? If I do play twice, I don't know if I'll have time, but I'm definitely playing at least once. So at least in this first one, how do you think it's going to go? Predictions are up right now. How will this game go? Let me give everything a shuffle. And uh, 
thank some of you guys for your subs while I'm shuffling everything up before we do our HQ. Okay, let's see. So, A.S. Miller, thank you for the Prime sub. 36 months, if by my calculation. That's three years. Thank you so much. And says, hey, hey, hey yourself. Flip Flop Maniac, thank you for the Prime sub. 18 months of subs. Hello, hello, Flip Flop Maniac. And Ranabishi, thank you for the nine months of Prime subs. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for coming by and thank you for the very generous subs. Um, the Prime subs, uh, everybody gets one if you have Amazon Prime every month. And if you have used it on me, it's very nice. And I, I am very honored that you have used your precious Prime sub on my little channel here. And there's a cat who is uh, celebrating as well. Okay, how do you guys think the tournament's going overall, those who are playing? Questions, comments, concerns, we're almost at the halfway point. We did the different format this time. I think it's going pretty well. Just my personal opinion, which is not biased at all. Thank you for the water, I needed that. Hero deck gets an extra shuffle. Villain deck gets an extra shuffle with those ambitions in there. And uh, by the way, I do stream, in case you don't know, I stream multi-stream right now. I'm on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook. You can watch wherever you want, whatever works best for you. And I will re-upload this onto YouTube afterward. So look for it there as well. All right, seven of you say win, easy, uh, easy win, 100% of the people, of the points. How is that? Did two people say lose but didn't put any points? Oh, I guess it's just so small. 210 points. 240. Okay, okay. I see what's happening. First time playing the tourney, absolutely loving it. Cracking out some cards I haven't played in years, if ever. I'm very happy to, to hear that. I try to use a lot of different variety. Um so that you get to play some sets you don't normally play. Uh, same for me when I play these setups too. Oh, a second person says playing some sets I haven't touched yet. Some new stuff. I'm glad this is giving you an excuse to play the new stuff. Because the new stuff is really good. If it's the, Especially if it's the new, new stuff. And Weapon X looks really fun too. I can't wait to get my hands on that. Do a lot of berserking. Uh, check out the new Enraging Wounds. We do have our first pod with core in it this week. I think that's pretty good. Um, that happened because I wanted to put in Ant-Man and the Wasp in 2099. I had to move things a little bit. But uh, I think it's worth it. I think that setup's pretty fun, actually, the Core and Guardians one. Challenging myself by only playing once. That is a big challenge, Montex. Kudos to you for playing on hard mode. All right, I got my starters ready. I got other decks ready. We got two minutes left of this, so I can take my time to adapt my Mastermind. Let's see who I'm going to start with. Very, very cool. This villain, this uh, mastermind is really neat. I'm so glad that we got a six card, six villain adapting Sinister Six mastermind. That is hard to say. And I think it's pretty cool that it's 2099 because I got to learn about these characters. Tony King says, love the tournament. I'm hoping I can actually take my time this week because the move is over. Congrats on that. Still want to go back and play some other pods because all the setups have looked great. And yeah, you can go ahead and look at the um, fun levels in the uh, setup sheets and pick one that was highly rated and you're gonna have a good time, I'm sure. I think at the end, I'm gonna do a ranking of all the setups, all like what, 60 plus setups I did for the tournament. It's gonna be actually over 80 setups. Um, and uh, from, from most fun to least fun. Yeah, the hard part is uh, choosing heroes. I totally get that. Um, I like to have fun with it. I'll reveal the mastermind in a second. Um, I have fun with it. Uh, use Master Strike. Use the links I provided because what I do is I have, I use two of my monitors. On one, I put all the heroes that are given for the setup. And on the second one, I look at all the available heroes. And then I will compare and contrast and, and, and do my eliminations there. It's pretty fun for me. Or you can actually go <laughs> go a serious mode and get all the cards out in front of you and do that. By the way, I, I didn't talk about what's available here, but I did uh, sort them out myself. As far as uh, support decks, there for this one, you got standard and special officers. You got standard sidekicks and X students. <laughs> I had a feeling somebody did. You got standard wounds and you got all the bystanders here. I've sorted out a good chunk of the bystanders. So if for some reason I get a ton, um, I can filter through some more. And that's a trick for you guys. If you don't want to sort out the whole bystander stack, normally you won't get more than 30. Um, so take thir the top 30 bystanders that are applicable and shuffle those all together. If you end up getting more, just, just later on in the game, search for more. Voted lose because Simon, the company that makes uh, certain Marvel games. And that is uh, definitely what you meant. Okay, so we got just closed now. 
Uh, nine people say win, five people say lose, but boy are the folks who say win very confident in my abilities here to win, or at least the setup being too easy. I don't know. Hopefully I don't let these, uh, these ambitions escape. Let me go ahead and hide that. All right, so our first mastermind, I'll reveal that after the HQ is revealed. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this tease. It doesn't really do anything. Um, all right. When Bagel said, time to play the game twice, I decided to roll some small dice in the loss. Oh, I see. All right, uh, let me start with our HQ. We are beginning with, we've got Retractable Talons, Spidey 2099. We got Toxic Mutations, Ravage. I just love the art from this set. We've got Venomous Fang, Spidey 2099. We got Warpath's Endless Endurance. And we got Long Range Spider Sense. Okay, I was a little bit worried. But we do have a couple of two costs here in the HQ. I know where they're going. I am going to need some retractable talons to go undercover on the other side in order to make Venomous Fangs work. So two of them are reserved for the other side. I just need Covert Cover. That's it. If I get some special officers, those might do the job for me. But uh, let's see who our starting mastermind is. Any guesses? Which Sinister Six member is on the top? Invisible points for you if you get it. I always think a hero combo I think is really strong and then when I go to grab the cards I go with heroes I find funny instead. Hey, that's a good reason to do it. Um, I know folks who pick for thematic reasons. I strictly pick on how synergistic the hero is just because I'm really trying to, I'm not trying to min-max my setup, but I want to be vindicated that my synergy picks were valid. Okay, we got Doc Ock and we got Vulture. I love Doc Ock 2099 because there's actual octopus tentacles. <laughs> that's amazing. Sandwoman. Oh, those are three of the six. Let's see who's right. I'm going to flip it right now in three, two, one. It is Venom. Nobody's right. And that's a great way to start this one. So I'll go over Venom real quick before I start the game because he is my first mastermind, at least unless a strike happens and they adapt right away. So Venom 2099 gets minus one attack for each card I have that costs two. That's pretty good for this setup. Master Strike. Each player KOs a card that costs two from their hand or discard pile or gains a wound. Adapt. This means you do get to choose. Fight. You may gain a hero that cost two or less. No, to cost two from the HQ or KO pile. Adapt. Good for this setup. Amazing art. Exciting setup. I'm ready to start. All right, folks. Turn number one begins right now. And what do I get for turn number one? I get a four and two. But it's the rare reverse four and two. Let's hope there's something I can fight. Who knows? Turn one is going to give us... Our first Master Strike, of course it does. Oh, I was about to play. Oh, you know, this is appropriate. That's Venom. I forgot I had the monster set. That's fine. All right. So wounds go out because there aren't any. <laughs> oh, I know it. It's just not what I expect. Okay. Uh, each player KOs a card that costs two from their hand or discard pile. Does, don't have that. Or gains a wound. So wounds go out. Just standard wounds go out, but they're going to hurt. Early wounds, I don't like that. Okay, and they're going to adapt. So Venom's not sticking around too long. Literally not longer than the very beginning of the game. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. Well, actually, Tony King, maybe not the side you expect, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, our new mastermind is Vulture2099. Vulture gets plus attack equal to the highest VP value of any villain in the escape pile, rooftops, or bridge. And on the Master Strike, if it has any villains in those places, or rooftops or bridge specifically, one of them escapes and each player gains a wound to adapt. And if you fight, you can move a villain to another city space and swap them around. Love the flavor and callbacks to previous Vulture stuff. Um, so, speaking of the Spidey side, I do have two recruit this turn. Nothing to fight, unfortunately. I waste my four attack early turn, which could be really good. However, I may not want to take a two cost thing here because guess what my hand's gonna look like on turn three it's gonna be six recruit which means i can take a five cost which is very very good um right hand side has a five and one so both sides can recruit a five cost okay so this side can at least have an even number of recruit so i can do two and then two 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 Right hand side is going to have a three and three hand after that. 
So now that I looked at that, I actually am going to change plans back. The left side is going to be the Spidey side because I have most even numbers. I can get maximum recruit this way. And right side, I can get one of the five costs. Probably Endless Endurance. It's a great card to get early. Um, anyway, let's look at our two costs that we've got. By the way, Tech Fiend, thank you for the Prime sub. Seven months. I appreciate it. So the cards I can get right now are Retractable Talon Spidey. One attack, you may send this under cover. Cyber Mod Covert, draw a card. Tech Fiend, I chose Symbiote Spider-Man. And I chose Ravage 2099. And Gideon White, thank you for seven months of Prime sub. I appreciate you too. Thank you. Um, so this card, keep, keep this in mind if you're going to play this setup. Um, you do get to send this under cover and immediately do the Cyber Mod Covert effect because they happen in that order. So you send it under cover. Then at that moment, you have a Covert in your victory pile that qualifies for the Cyber Mod effect. So you can send this under cover and draw a card immediately when you play this. Keep that in mind. Um, that's a great card. I do want to um, have that on both sides so I can get the Cyber Mod Covert on the other side. I've also got Silk here who says, uh, Spectrum, reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs two or less, draw it. It needs the colors, but I'm going to get those later. And I'll get as many two costs as I can, so it doesn't really matter what I get first. But I'm going to start with the Retractable Talons for my first pick up this turn. And my only pick up this turn. And we got Spider Sense Webbing. Okay, Spider Silk Webbing. That's another Fate of Future. These two cards go really well together. And that's what I'm going for. I have to start getting some attack power because these ambitions could come out quickly. And I risk an escape. So again, turn two. I got two rare starting hands. I got the uh, the, the four and one. Rare four and one. I got the rare five and one. Five and one. Um, yeah, Ravage looks super cool. Okay, turn two is... Oh my gosh, what a shuffle this is. I'm just playing the monster sound because it's the future. Who knows what they sound like. So, Vulture 29 does his Master Strike. If there are any villains on the rooftops or bridge, one of them escapes and each player gains a wound. Actually, not a bad one to get early. So, that totally whiffs, except for the Adapt. So, he's going to Adapt. I don't usually have double strike villain decks. That never happens to me. It's usually twists and stuff. Okay, our new mastermind is Sandwoman2099. She gets plus two attack for each villain in the city, which means she's only six attack. Oh, I wish I had six attack right now. Uh, the strike is you may either recruit or attack this turn, but not both. Adapt, and the fight effect is similar, but a little more helpful. Actually, not helpful at all. It's the next player. All right, let's see what I can get. I got some good stuff for five in the HQ, so... And good stuff to get early. I think all these heroes have great art. I like Warpaths. I love Silks. Uh, the 29 heroes. Symbiote Spider-Man looks really cool um, for a hero in that set. A, a great, great hero deck for uh, for art. Got a lot of five. Got three different five costs here. Let's take a look at them. First, we got Spider Silk Webbing. Uh, Spidey 2099. Three Recruit. I'm a sucker for cards. That's a big printed recruit. The next hero you recruit this turn goes on top of your deck. Strength. Faded Future. Faded Future means when you play it, 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 can go, it, you may put it on the bottom of your deck. We've also got Toxic Mutations Ravage, two plus attack, strike, you may get, you get plus two attack and Faded Future. Those two are coiled together. We also got another great card, Endless Endurance. Warpath, when you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn, draw two extra cards. Now, the best one I could get right now is Spider Silk Webbing because of that big recruit and how early it is in the game, but I definitely want others. And I can get Faded Future, so this Recruit can come back pretty quickly. So this is going to be my first pickup. Early Recruit usually gives me the most success. There's Down on the Dregs Ravage for the right-hand side. So left-hand side is my Spidey deck. Right-hand side is my Miscellaneous Faded Future deck if I can get that to work. But that's it for this turn. Of course, my next turn is going to look like this. It's going to have three and three, which means maybe there'll be something to hit. Maybe I'll see a Henchman. And I have Sinister Clones in here, right? Uh, so... I love to clone some of these, especially the uh, uncommons. Or is it a uh, four or less on those? Yeah, so the uh, uncommons, uncommon spiders. Turn three. There's my six recruit I was expecting, and oh, there's other vulture. There's present day vulture, who ambushes, and he's gonna go to. I don't, I don't know why I lost the button. All right, if there's a villain on the rooftops or bridge, swap vulture with one of those villains. Um, so he doesn't go anywhere because there aren't anybody. There isn't anybody there. Well, I could have hit him on my very first turn, but now I can't. Um, all right, so six recruit, 
as tempting as picking up these five costs are, especially Endless Endurance, um, I am trying to go with a reliable Oops All 2 cost. I might, that might come back to bite me because look, I only have one two cost in the HQ. So I'm hoping that that pops up with another two cost or I have to get a sidekick and waste my opportunity. Now I could take Endless Endurance. That's not it. I could take Endless Endurance. Um, but a two cost Spidey, Spidey deck is not going to have problems drawing cards. So I don't really need that over here. Let's just go with the original plan and take long range spider sense and hope that another two cost comes up. And it didn't. A very expensive card came up in a hero deck with a bunch of two costs. This is a pretty expensive HQ. Now I got a tough decision to make. Do I recruit out of here? Because right hand side is going to have three. There is stuff for it to take. But I really don't want to mess up the two costs because I know I got Symbiote Spidey. I know it's going to work out. But by the way, this card is amazing. Detective Vibrations. We'll come back to that. Um, definitely sidekick for this deck. I don't need officers. I need two costs. It's too bad I waste this extra recruit, but I get a sidekick and this rock slide. Some shattering might be useful against some of these ambitions. Now maybe I can start cooking with what I'm trying to do here. One can only hope, right? So hey, people who voted for this uh, setup for me to play, uh, why'd you vote for this one? I'm just genuinely curious. I know some people, some people said they were going to vote purely on name, but uh, I don't think that was everybody. I love the Fate of Future keyword, but it would be hard for them to reuse the keyword unless it's a time travel set. I don't know. It doesn't necessarily have to do with time travel. It ha could have to do with like fate and a future path. I could see an Iron Lad hero set using it, even though that is kind of time travel, but you know what I mean? Um, some other Young Avengers could have it. That don't necessarily time travel, but we see them as older characters. No, there's a few heroes. I, there's a few ways I could see it used. I don't think it's as restrictive as some others. Okay. If you haven't checked out my 2099 uh, playthroughs, I did a bunch of them when the set comes out. Whenever the set comes out, I do a bunch of playthroughs with mostly just that set. You can find that on my on my channel. In um, I think I call them uh, expansion features right now in, in that playlist. All right, here's our three and three for turn four. We get our first ambition, painful choice, and it's one of the tougher ones. So it has eight attack plus one for each twist stacked next to the scheme. There are no twists right now, so it's just eight attack, but that's still a lot. <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun binging those. If you watch the early videos, I'm very sorry. I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but I gotta start somewhere. Mm. It's a painful choice. If this escapes, each other player chooses Recruiter Attack, then discards all their cards with that icon. Not the worst, honestly. But still, I don't want to escape for the scheme. Uh, then I wanted to see Mr. Sinister. And yes, it feels like there's enough time travel for in Marvel 4 to cable slash apocalypse set with that would be neat. Yes, I would love to see that too. I, I The Sinister 6 are very cool. I'm glad to be playing them. All right, so here's my... Th I can't hit anything for three attacks, so let's just play my three agents here and choose what I'm getting. So we got... Uh, down on the dregs to recruit instinct draw a card from the bottom of your deck great combo with faded future obviously gives me recruit in the early game i already got another recruit card i do want to recruit a lot of things out of there so i can expose the two costs i've also got venomous fen oh my gosh i i changed the row that i had these buttons for logistics reasons and i'm going to keep doing that this stream so apologies if i keep panning cutting to to blank space i haven't lost my mind completely to attack and then double cyber mod covert draw a card I need work to make this happen. I need to take the two cost Spidey over here to be able to see that. So I'm going to lean in on the recruit, even though the city is kind of scaring me a little bit. Hopefully I have the time and uh, take down on the dregs, get some more instinct over here, make this work. Of course, I didn't reveal a two cost. What is happening? Where are my two cost cards? There are so many here in this setup and they're not showing up. This is definitely one, even if I don't get to play it a second time on stream, I would play a second time for the tournament because I would guarantee I'm not going to have this HQ situation in the second game. What are the odds, right? <laughs> that would be actually a good uh, good idea, Ben Linden, to play my very first setup again. Because I know I made mistakes on it. That would be cool. They're, they're too afraid to show up. Okay, you get the you get the pun award for this, this stream so far. Well, that's pretty good. That's a six recruit. I can get Detective Vibrations. That'll send me uh, to the races. 
No twists, no symbiotes look sinister. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I have some decent attack. I can actually hit Vulture this turn. But let's see what happens. We got our second ambition, Crackdown. If this one escapes, of course, the high attack ones are coming out first. Because, because of course, they are. So, choose a class. Each other player reveals their hand and discards all cards of that class. If it escapes, that's what it does. Um, all right. Let's play some of my cards here. I can actually play something. So, two attack. I don't have Spectrum, so I just get two attack from this. Which, uh, which I'll take. We've got two more attack, four attack, and three recruit. I am going to recruit. Nothing yet. I, I, I just had a thought. I was thinking, why, if the city is above the HQ, why is re recruit printed above attack? I've always wondered that. Um, okay, so Vulture is four attack, and I have four attack, so let's hit Vulture without thinking about it too hard. I definitely want to see some Sinister Clones, assuming I can hit them. If they're just there to push Ambitions out of the city, I don't really want to see them. <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so here, check out what I've got. I have no two costs for this side. I have Venomous Fang, Cyber Mod draw card. The problem with this is characters, uh, cards like Symbiote Spidey and Silk can't draw these. Because they don't cost, it doesn't cost two or less. So even though I, I have to stick to my guns here, I am going to see those two costs. They're in there. They'll show up at any moment. Right side is going to get a six cost. So let me get another sidekick and hope that things work out in the future. I've got a standard sidekick. I'm going to go with that. Yes, Outwit is one of the most simple. Uh, spectrum is along those lines. And there's a lot of uh, environments, a lot of uh, settings I think they would make sense in. For sure. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Recruit coming up. Turn six gives me Wolverine from X Men 92. With the context of this setup, um, I I don't know. A shame that Spidey can't outwit. Um, if we get a, I mean Peter Parker should be able to do that, but a um, superior Spider-Man hero set without wit would be great. I think. Because he does do that, even if he's a jerk while he does it. Alright, so Wolverine, Sinisterine. Um, yeah, it's a Sinister clone of Wolverine. That's my theme for this thing. But that would be great on the right-hand side with the with the Ravage cards I've got. Okay, speaking of Ravage, let's play him and the other sh and the Shield Agents for all that recruit. Three, four, five, six. You don't like it? Um, I that, that allows you to be able to do it more, but the, the effects can be less powerful, but you can do it more, which feels good. Plus, then that makes Modok even more interesting when he makes you have four. Not all of the mechanics have to be that difficult, I don't think. All right, by the way, uh, Detective Vibration is one of my favorite cards in 2099. Look at that. Four attack, which is good enough by itself. But also, reveal the top two cards of the villain deck, put them in, back in any order, and then Faded Future. Which means if you have a thin enough deck, or a thin enough just, yeah, thin enough deck, even if you have cards in your discard pile, you can put this back and draw it again and get four attack and four attack and four attack. This game, this card has won me games. So I am taking this. Hopefully I uncover a two cost. And I do. Good. It's nice to see. I vehemently disagree that those keywords were ruined by the addition of multi-class cards. Because you do have to do a lot of Spectrum abilities to make it worth it. I don't think any of them... I don't think a multi-class and Spectrum are just going to win you the game automatically. Um, and what Gideon Wyatt said, they're designed together. Hey, there are some, you know, combos that are a bit broken, but if you do a randomizer, you know, you're not putting them together, you just get lucky. But they're, they're few and far between. If you get Wolverine on the left side, does that mean he costs zero because the way to recruit him is attack? Um, no, the effective cost of a villain that becomes a hero is their printed attack in the lower right. So his cost would be seven for anything that cares. But good question. Uh, turn seven is Chameleon. Chameleon's fight effect is copy the effects of the hero of the HQ space under Chameleon, including its recruit and attack. If I use this when there's a rare under him, that can be very helpful. So let's see, what in the world am I going to do? Let me generate all the attack I can. That's two attack. We've got retractable talons, and I have a choice to make. Do I want to send it undercover for Cyber Mod? I, 
I don't really need two. I, just, I need one to make a second one work. And I don't have a second one yet, so I'm going to keep it for the simple attack value. I'll send it under cover later. I'll just play it for that third attack. Okay, so I have Rock Slide here. Rock Slide can shatter a villain. So I could shatter Chameleon and hit him in the sewers. But he would copy the effects of the hero in the HQ space. Unfortunately, I don't have enough recruit to take Silk Stalking. I only have one this turn. Um, I think I want to save Rock Slide. Yeah, it's very, it's in the same spot. It's very, very useful to do it that way. Um, I want to save Rock Slide for a, an ambition because I'm worried these are going to escape. Um, shattering Painful Choice or Crackdown down to four is going to be useful later on. So I think I'm going to do nothing, which means I can heal this wound. And that's good enough for me, even though the city's getting scary. I might have to just accept escapes are going to happen. So uh, let's KO this wound because I did no fighting or recruiting. And I'll end my turn there. Got a little recruit locked somehow, thanks to that wound. By the way, Sandwoman is uh, at much more attack than six. But my general thing is I don't track Mastermind attack until I'm even close to hitting their base. Then I'll start putting dice on them and stuff. Keep that in mind. But look at all this recruit I got over here. I have to keep in habits of... I have to line them up this way so you can see the values. That six recruit I have. Not that much attack, though, which worries me. Plus, we have these henchmen that are going to clone. <laughs> exactly. Uh, not a great start here. All right. And there's a third ambition that I can't hit this turn. Pressure point. If this one escapes, each other player reveals an instinct hero or gains a wound to the top of their deck. Three ambitions in the city. Uh, oh, I forgot to press this button, by the way. I already set it up. Um, I lose when there are four ambition villains that escape. Three of them are in the city, and I can't hit anything. One is going to escape next turn unless I get real lucky. That's not great. Uh, I don't think you'd... <laughs> I don't think you want to ask. Okay. So I kind of have a bit of a wall crawl here. Uh, when I play Spidey, next to I recruit this turn goes on top of your deck, which is good because I can get a five cost. I can get a six cost, but there aren't any. So I'll get three recruit, and my agents are gonna give me four, five, six. So what am I going to recruit right now? I've got another, yeah, where are those henchmen? They're gonna show up next and push two emissions out, aren't they? Um, so we got uh, another spider silk webbing. We've got toxic mutations, and then we've got endless endurance. We've also got Venomous Fangs, by the way. Cybermon Covert Covert Draw card. I, I'm not there yet. I haven't seen enough of the other ones. Which is the best one to put on top of my deck? If I put Toxic Mutations... Oh, I'm definitely going to have multiple escapes. I'll be in trouble. Look at look at, look at this power level in the, H, in the city. Um, I need attack. I need it desperately. Um, the best that most attack I can get is Toxic Mutations. If I'm lucky enough to draw this with Spider Silk Webbing, I can get the Strength Trigger. It could happen. If I was, uh, had a bit of more of a more forgiving si situation in the city, I would take Endless Endurance to give me those extra draws. So... Either webbing is going to trigger mutations, or mutations is going to trigger webbing. But uh, I will uh, go ahead and take talk mutations to the top of my deck. Wow, that was a lag. It's on the top of my deck right now. Press the button like five minutes ago. And Venomous Fangs comes in. All right, everybody, let's see what escapes I have. And there's Toxic Mutations. Two, three, four. Well, that's three attack. If I get lucky and get the Spidey card in my hand, I can actually get more attack save myself a little bit. And then I have to deal with a cross-dimensional Wolverine Rampage? Five, six. Didn't get it. This is four attack. That's not enough for anything in the city. Yeah, this first playthrough might be a wash. We'll see. I might lose faster than I expected. <clears throat> but at least I get two. All right. That's, yeah, that's five recruit. That's not gonna, that's not gonna fight anything. Okay, we got Hobgoblin. Uh, so here's what happens. Um, we have an escape, and it is painful choice escaping, which means I have to do this. Uh, things are things are not going well for me. 
So let me read the order of operations here from the scheme. I didn't even get a single twist yet, and this is happening. Okay, uh, when an ambition villain escapes, do his ambition effect. So the very first thing I have to do is uh, KO a hero that costs six or less on the HQ. Uh, I think it's going to have to be one of these Venomous Fangs. Oh, that's good. That's my goal. Yeah, um... Maybe one of these five costs I should get rid of, but... I'm thinking maybe Spider Silk Webbing. I got one, but there's this is a common. There's going to be more of them. I'm going to take out Venomous Fangs. So, so I'm sorry, Miguel, but he gets KO'd. Replenished with... There, there we go. There's Symbiote Spider-Man. And then back to the bridge. This is going to escape. Each other player, that's the right-hand side, chooses attack or recruit. Then discards all their cards with that icon. So what do I have? I need to keep the attack, although I might not be able to fight anything. Um, but I'm going to choose recruit. And I'll discard all my cards with recruit, just in the, in the hopes that I can fight something. And uh, that's an escape for me. That's the first one. So that is one ambition villain escaped. For now, there will be more. There's plenty of things that can move two things in the city. Oh, this is not great. We got Hobgoblin, ambush. Each Sinister Six villain captures a bystander. So a bystander is going to Chameleon, a senior supporter. And a bystander is going to Hobgoblin, which is a standard bystander. Okay, well, I can shatter all the villains I want, but I still can't hit anything. He was supposed to be my ace in the hole, and he hasn't shown up until now. Okay, five recruit on the left-hand side. I mean, I'm going to keep trying to build for spiders, even though I might not get the chance to survive. We'll see. So, spider sense tingling is reveal the top two cards of your deck. Put any that costs two or less into your hand. Put the rest back in any order. This is very good. Doesn't give anything printed on its own. But silk stalking here has spider friends reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs zero KO, and if it costs one or two, draw it. This is a slightly better card right now. Gives the one attack. I shouldn't have trouble getting the trigger um, soon. Plus, I get to thin the deck a little bit. Yeah, exactly. I'm hoping for that Spidey chain. I was hoping for it earlier, because one thing that the Spidey decks are good for are early recruits, but they kind of have to show up for me to do that. Whoa. I just lost an extra card. So, Warpath here. Dangerous Maneuver. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs zero, you may KO it. Tap the information 225. You get plus three attack. So, this works fine in a Spidey deck. You can't get the tactical information if you don't have a five cost. So, I might consider getting one. But uh, right now, um, I already got the KO power card, so I'm going to go ahead with Spider Sense Tingling for my next two cost recruit. And then there's another Detect Vibrations. Okay, that card can also win the game for me if I uh, have the time. Alright, this hand should be able to hit something, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have three attack plus a sidekick, <clears throat> so maybe I'll have just enough to hit Hobgoblin, if I'm lucky. But we'll have enough time to do so. Here's my four card hand. Here's the next card from the villain deck. Cool. All right, so here's what happens, you guys. <laughs> I have two escapes. I was worried about this. So the Sinister clone's gonna come in and clone. Let's do this one at a time. Starting with the escape. So Crackdown is going to escape. <sighs> First, I have to KO Hero from the HQ. Um, Is it gonna be the other Venomous Fangs or is it actually gonna be Dangerous Maneuver? This is an uncommon. It's a very good card. It can work on either side. Or do I get one of, one of these five costs? I really hate to get rid of the text vibrations. It's so good. I think I get rid of this other spider silk webbing. The thing about Faded Future is I can get one that can come back multiple times. Especially if Ravage gets his card that can draw from the bottom of the deck. I have that already. So I'm actually going to get rid of spider silk webbing. Unfortunately. And there's silk. Very good. Now we have... Crackdown is going to escape. Choose a class. Each other player reveals their hand and discards all cards of that class. I'm going to choose Instinct. And I don't have to discard anything. So that one's not as bad right now. Alright. Yeah, I can fight something now, but at what cost, right? So now the clones come in. And as soon as they do... Um, they ambush. I'm just reading the comments. 
Yeah, the spiders don't get any recruit, and if you get a clogged HQ, you really don't know what you do with right to a halt. Yeah, I was hoping I would get enough cards with the shield agents that I didn't have to worry about that anymore, but they just didn't show. Um, if you have the five cost in hand for the formation, you won't brick it with Spider-Man. Yes, if it's in hand. Um, Faded Future can help with that. Um, I was also, th also thinking Endless Endurance, because higher chance you draw it again, you know? Anyway, let's take care of this. Sinister clones. Ambush clone when the clone copy enters the city and shuffle the bias center into the villain deck. So, they're going to clone, which means that I, I'm going to have an escape. And that's going to be 92 Wolverine. So, another KO, which is going to be who this time? I think it's going to be the other Venomous Fangs, actually. Okay. I got down in the Dregs Ravage. And the escape effect is cross-dimensional Wolverine Rampage. So anybody who doesn't have a Wolverine card uh, gets a wound. And nobody's got any Wolverines, so that's going to be uh, wounds all around again. These early wounds are killing me, too. By the way, I forgot to uh, I gotta update the Ambition Village escape to two. Okay. Which is gross. Yeah, I was hoping to clone some spiders. That would have been great. But no. Because you can only uh, recruit heroes that... Uh, Sorry, you can only clone heroes that have printed a cost of four or less, and that co that counts for uh, uncommon spiders. But I got a clone. Let's see if I get lucky. In the top part of the villain deck is a sinister clone. It's not. It's Professor X. Who would have come in? So let's look for uh, our first sinister clone. There it is. Okay. When you uh, ambush clone, the second one does not also ambush. But I have to shuffle the bystander into the villain deck so let me do that right now and shuffle this up but yeah i can fight but i can't clone because i have no recruit because i had to discard it thanks to the escaping ambition and i'm gonna have some bystanders carried off this is not gonna be great maybe i can turn this around okay so i've got just a strictly four attack hand no frills and let's fight one of these sinister clones uh, I don't get to recruit anything, so I kind of waste this clone, but at least I emptied out uh, city space, and that's going to be the end of my turn. New hand. Okay, there's only two attack in my hand. Not going the way I thought this was going to go. Turn 11 is Shocker Ambush. Each player reveals an instinct hero or discards a card. Okay, right side can. I reveal... Ravage and I don't discard. I need attack this turn. Um, although this hand right now, I can hit the Sinister Clones and clone uh, Soak or something. I do get to draw two cards with the hero, with the, the sidekick hero. But I need all five of these. But I have to discard a card. So what am I discarding? I don't know what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna draw. It's a higher chance I draw an agent than a trooper, so I'm gonna discard an agent. So I know I'll play the sidekick, draw two cards. One, two. I didn't. Spectrum was not gonna work, so now I can't recruit this turn. But good news is two, three, four, five, six. I can fight the pressure point ambition, so that works out for me. Um, retractable talons, I am not sending this undercover yet. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six attack. Okay. So options are I could fight Chameleon, which will copy Spe Soak's effect, but I'm going to lose if I don't fight these ambition villains, and they're going to get stronger. So let me fight the pressure point villain um, and uh, get rid of it. Into my victory pile you go for four VP, and that's a good turn. I'm not going to get the best score, but now I'm just trying not to lose. And these were the stronger Ambition Villains. Um, if you didn't notice, what I did with the Ambition Villains, you guys, is I gave you one of each attack value from 1 to 10. So we had the 7 and 8 escape, and I just hit the 6. So there's a 9 and 10, but there's also numbers 6 to 1. So I know those are coming. And that'll give me a little bit of a break, even though the twist will happen and power those up. Okay. That's... One attack, and I got Symbiote Spidey, so maybe some more. But I'm going to have more escapes here. Turn 12. Another Sinister Clone. So there we go. More escapes. Let's uh, see if I get lucky for the top one. And nope, that's an Ambition. 
So next clone comes in and it's going to push Chameleon out of the city with a bystander. So everybody's got to discard a card. So many early escapes. That worked out. One clone with the shuffle with the hero deck and hopefully put the spiders on top. Um, yeah, I mean, unless they were already going to be on top. So I do get to do a clone this turn. No, I don't. I can't fight anything this turn. So no cloning. Yep, no cloning this turn at all. Okay. So back to what I was doing. So Chameleon, I'm going to do a KO uh, from the HQ. Who am I KOing? Is it going to be down on the dregs? This is a good card. I want two to kind of make it work, but I already have a big recruit. A lot of recruit. Is it going to be... This is, a, this is an uncommon. I kind of want two of these so I can make them use do the formation. Left side can benefit from this too if I get a five cost. I think it's going to have to be down on the dregs because it's a common and uh, I already have one. It's a very good card though. So now we've got uh, Chameleon who's going to escape, which means each player's got to discard a card for the bystander that is being carried off. So let's take care of that discard. Oh, and I got it. I shuffle the bystander, right? I, hope, I think I did. I can't remember. Hopefully I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I grabbed one. Um, okay, so now discarding cards. I'll discard the trooper since I can't fight anything. Left hand side. That. Should I discard the trooper here? I gotta hope I can get three attack. I'm gonna discard the agent in hopes that I can draw with uh, Stimulus and Spidey. Because if I'm not, uh, I can't, I'm gonna be in big trouble. So um, I've got <laughs> simply two, three, four, five recruit this turn. I guess as I'm not caring about my escape score, I can kind of go wild in the HQ and take whatever I want, uh, or let whatever I want to escape, unless it's um, a sinister ambition. So we're going to go with Endless Endurance, because it's a 5 cost, and I like it, and I can afford it, and there's a lot of 2 costs here, and I can't take the 6 cost. Toxic Mutations is next. So at this point, if I'm playing in the tournament, I've given up on ranking high in escapes. I'm probably going to do poorly, but that's okay. I'm just going for high numbers and all the rest. If I can win this game quickly because I let escapes happen, somehow, even though I haven't hit a single Sinister 6 2099, um, that's going to be good for me. Get a high points per turn, even though I have a lost a lot to the escape file. Who knows? But I'm not giving up yet. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Look at that. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 recruit. If I uncover some rares, I can take them. Five cards left here. Turn 13 gives us Craven. So Craven comes in and Hobgoblin goes out. So that's another escape. I got to KO yet another hero from the HQ. Um, let me pick somebody. Dark Strength is good for what I'm trying to build. All these are good. I don't really have a great choice, uh, but when in doubt, go with the commons. Dark Strength doesn't draw, though. It gives me attack, which I do need. I need that. Um... This, is, uh, this still is going to help with the Rain Spectrum card. Toxic Mutations is very good. But it's a common. I already have one. You do need the Strength Trigger, but the more I take, the better I'm going to succeed. Gosh, I think I have to get rid of Dangerous Maneuver. It's a very good card, but it, it, the, it fits the least out of all of these. I hope I don't regret this. I usually love uh, Warpath. Okay, and then there's a discard for the bystander escaping again. Ooh, and there's the shiny rare Thwip. I'm really happy to see that one. How have I not cloned a single card yet this entire game? Well, um, if I discard an agent, I can't recruit. But maybe Spider Sense Tingling will draw something. I need two attack or one recruit. That's all I need. I can shatter as well. I don't want to waste that. So I'll discard an agent on the left-hand side. Right-hand side is going to also lose an agent because that's the only non-graves I have, or the only graves I have. And a Hobgoblin carries a bystander away. Oh, this is gross so far. Okay. Craven comes in. Craven, his attack is equal to the highest cost of the highest... Nope. Is equal to the cost of the highest cost here in the HQ. I do have a rare, but it's only a two cost. So he's going to be six attack thanks to Detect Vibrations over here. My first die of the game somehow. 
Okay, let's see what Spider Sense Tingling gives me. I mean, this, this game is exciting. I, it's completely out of my control. Top two cards of my deck. Put any that costs two or less into your hand. That should be all of them. Oh, cool. Yep. Put the rest back in any order. I've got two attack and two recruit. Now, I could hit something if I decided to shatter a villain. So, I could shatter the Sinister Clone and then clone something. But I'm probably just going to take the rare whip for attack to play this card you must put two cards from your hand on top of your deck and hopefully draw them later with other effects so i'm not cloning and i'm caring less about escapes now because i've had so many already so i'm just gonna go ahead and take the whip for two and leave it at that down to the dregs i knew another one would pop up I need more KO power, and of course I got rid of Warpath, who's one of the few KO cards I had available, but there's other opportunities. Five cards left, turn 14 is another Master Strike, so uh, there you go. Actually, I should probably play this one instead. I'm going to play the appropriate one, I promise. <laughs> I, have, I have extra buttons for extra effects, so I have to turn down the Master Strike counter. Okay, you may either recruit or attack this turn, but not both. Nice. On the turn where I was going to do both. I was, gonna, I was about to do a cool clone. Look. I could have cloned Detect Vibrations this turn. Oh, I couldn't have because it's four or less. But I could have at least recruited Detect Vibrations and fought something. Um, that's a bummer. Okay, let's adapt. I'm just getting... I feel like I'm just getting sucker punched over and over and over with this game. <laughs> Thank you. I had to switch to the other page, but I'll do it correctly. Just like, not letting up. At least I'm not at risk of losing yet. Because I took care of that one extra ambition. I could go through all six twists without losing. But I don't know. Alright, our new mastermind is Goblin2099. He gets minus one attack for each bystander in my victory pile. His Master Strike, each player puts a bystander from the victory pile into the escape pile or gains a wound. Adapt. Fight each villain in the, in the city, captures a bystander. Adapt. It's been tough. I have had some unlucky moments. And for tournament purposes, thank you for the water. I get how that's frustrating, but as a player, this is exciting for me because I am the underdog now. I have to fight back and rise up against this onslaught of attacks from the villains. And I think I can do it, and that's going to make me feel really accomplished if I can. Okay. Cool. Let's go. Um, starting with Detect Vibrations because this card is awesome. Check it out. Four attack. I can only attack or recruit, not both this turn. I gotta remember. Um, now, I don't have to pick yet. But the first one I do, I can't do the second one. Oh, oh the octopus sound effects. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have I don't have a splish splashy one. Um, here we go. Detect Vibrations. Reveal the top two cards to the villain deck. And put them back in any order. Faded future. Too bad my deck is still... This is my deck, so I'm not going to see it for a bit. I wish it was on a different part of the shuffle. But top two cards of the villain deck are... A Twist and 92 Jubilee. Okay, now check this out. The, the Twist is going to play an extra card from the villain deck. So I should probably put the twist second, and then fight this turn. Because I know there won't be an ambition first. Anyway. Yeah, Jubilee's gonna be first, and the ambition, and the twist second. Let's go back to what I was doing. Alright, so I got four attack, fade a future. I gotta check if this is a may or you must effect. I think I'm still gonna do it. I'm pretty sure it's a May effect. I'm like 95% sure it is. But, uh... You may. Yep, it's you may. So, let's put it on the bottom of my deck. There's only one card in my discard pile, but I'll see it again. And I've got uh, the uh, pseudo wall crawl here. Next year I recruit this turn. goes on top of my deck. Four, five, six total recruit. So, what am I going to do? Am I going to fight or am I going to recruit? If I recruit, I can get a second Detect Vibrations. I'll have another escape.
You know what? Maybe I should put the twist first. Because that way I know it's going to go twist and jubilee. I, I'm about to get detect vibrations at the top of my deck, you guys. So, this is really tempting to let the escape happen. Because this is so good and I can, I can, I can push the twist back a little bit more. I will have a Sinister Clone escape, but at this point, I don't really care about escapes anymore unless they're ambitions. So yeah, I'm going all in on powering myself up. Escapes aside, so I am going to do that. I'm not going to fight thanks to um, Sandwoman, who won't let me from the <laughs> from the past. Let's take Detect Vibrations to the top of my deck. It is so good. Having two of them is excellent. Goes to the top thanks to uh, Spidey2099. And I will end my turn there. And uh, Craven goes down to five. Because I got the six cost out of there. And have the escape. So there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I need the trigger for Ravid so we can draw the other type of vibrations I put there. I gotta focus on getting some instinct cards because that'll make the combo work. Ravage is one of the best self-contained hero sets I've played in a long time. Okay. Um... Hold on. I have to check the masterminds. I want to remember exactly what uh, Sandwoman said. It said the next player may not recruit or attack in the game. I thought it. Was, I thought I might have got that wrong and said the next time. So I'm glad I got it right. All right. So we know what's here, right? It's Jubilee uh, from X Men '92. So which means Sinister Clones are going to escape. We got another KO to do. I think I'm going to either go with Spider Sense Tingling KO'd. I need Dark Strength. Dark Strength is going to give me some attack that I desperately need. Um, down to the Dregs I need for the right. Toxic Mutations is also very good. It's a common that costs 5, so I could also see myself getting rid of this. I've already got a pretty good Fate of Future combo, and I do want more 2 costs in there. You know what? I am going to actually do this. I'm going to KO Toxic, toxic Mutations, believe it or not. I don't usually want to KO those higher costs, but I think it worked out here. And uh, Sinister Clones run away. And Jubilee comes in. She's got Fight, KO, uh, again, this is a hero. And Spectrum, you get plus two attack. Great for my left-hand side. As far as fighting, I can't fight anything this turn. I can still send Spidey under cover, but I'm not going to do it yet. I have no reason to. I should keep all the attack I can. And then I've got three recruits. So it's just going to be, I haven't cloned a single thing, and that's wild. That's so wild to me. All right, what am I taking? So uh, we got one attack, wall crawl. Spectrum, draw a card. That could be very useful if I wall crawl it and get a better hand next turn. We got spider sense tingling. We've already seen that. Dark Strike, we've seen that too. This one is, if I don't reveal a gray, considering what my deck is built up of, uh, this will give me three attack, which is very good. And then we got Shadow and Spider. This is a good card, so this is one I was leaning on. It's a ramp, this is uncommon. I get plus one attack for each other hero I play this turn that costs one or two. This is gonna give me the most bang for my buck here, so I'm gonna take that. I need that attack ramp desperately. Hey, and there's Superhuman Senses Warpath, which um, works great with Ravage. It's kind of one of the reasons I took him. Whenever you reveal or look at any number of cards from your deck this turn, you get plus one attack. Choose number one or more, investigate for a card of that cost. This also works great on the two cost side, believe it or not. Actually, it works really well for the spider side. So, if I do that, yeah, if I take this on the two cost side, then every time I do a spidey draw, it won't count. I have to reveal or look at. Although every spidey draw that's not something like Soak is reveal the top part of your deck and the cost one draw. It's actually very good for the spidey side if I can get this in my hand with something like Soak. We'll see. Whichever side can get it first is probably going to be the one to get it. Okay. That's it. Here's my left hand side. Thanks to uh, Shadow Spider's Wall Crawl. It'll hopefully give me some attack. And I got two, two costs in my hand already. And I got Silk Stalking that's going to trigger. Finally, a good hand over here. Even more attack. Oh, this wound fell out. I got to put that back in. Okay. We got the right hand side. Speaking of wounds. Turn 16, Scheme Twist that we already knew about. 
So, here we go. Stack this twist next to the scheme. Ambition villains get uh, plus one attack now. Play another card from the villain deck. Second card from the villain deck is going to be 92 Beast, who's going to push out. Oh, so many escapes. Shocker. Ambush. Each player reveals an instinct hero draws a card. Discard card that would happen already. No escape effect on him. So, let's do our KO. What am I KOing? Yeah, so I'm probably going to take it on the right-hand side. It, he'll be good on either side. It was, just a, it was just a fleeting thought. I'm going to get rid of Spider Sense Tangling. I like it. It's great for what I'm doing, but uh, the other cards give me attack right now, and I need that, and I can get more of those later. But just like right now, there's another one. There they are. Okay, Shocker escapes. Everybody moves down. By the way, we have another escape. You can check this out. Beast has ambush, charge one space. So more escapes. But you know what? I'm having so much fun with things escaping. Let's keep going. Who am I KOing now? Um, now, I'm going to actually KO Dark Strength. Because there's gonna I've seen one. There'll be more of these. So that's getting KO'd. And it's a symbiote. Uh, it's a Spidey 2099, actually. Oh, jeez. Okay. Another Sinister Clone escapes. If I was reviewing these results and it was me um, reviewing them, I would um, probably think that they entered the escapes wrong because I've had so many already. That was not nice, Beast. Well, um, I got Detect Vibrations. Let's fade a future this one that I basically wall crawled. We've got uh, four attack. I get to look at the top two cards of the villain deck. They are Inflict Pain Ambition, a two attack one, and a Sinister Clones. I want the ambition to come in first, so I'll be able to fight it, even though the clones are going to come in and mess things up. Um, I'd rather them come in, it, I can hit it for three. Left hand side should be able to hit it for three. Okay, um, or I could have the clones come in and push things out first. Either way, it's fine as long as I hit those first. Alright, Faded Future, I'm going to put it on the bottom of the deck. I've got two more attack, five, six, and I've got one, two, three recruit. By the way, i got to adjust Craven. Because Craven is 7 attack, thanks to the rare that's in there. Well, look at that. I got 6 attack. Almost could fight Craven if it wasn't for that rare. Um, I can fight the clones and finally clone something. I can actually cloning down of the dregs would actually be very good for me. Um, extra recruit. I don't really need that, but I do need to draw a card from the bottom of my deck. I have two of those Fate of Future cards. Um, if I fight 92, 92 Beast... Oh, he's not in the sewers. <laughs> like, why is he not in the sewers? Alright, if I fight him, uh, tech draw a card. I don't really have tech. The strength would be nice. But I would be taking something out that is more attack. But again, I don't really care about the escapes anymore. Even though... Craven is going to KO a rare. But I'll deal with that. I think I'll be okay. I think I'll survive. I want to clone down in the dregs. That is what I want to do. So I'm going to do that. Let's commit to fighting the Sinister Clones. Clone the next hero. You recruit this one that has printed cost of four or less. And let's do that. I do get to shuffle up the hero deck this way. All right, for three, let's go ahead and uh, recruit down to the dregs and clone it. Let's see what comes in. Toxic Mutations. So I do have to search for this. Where is it? By the way, look. Oh, his rare was coming up. All those two costs were coming. Oh, oh man, two shadowed spiders were coming soon. Maybe I messed myself up by doing this. Anyway, where is it? Here's another one. This is gonna be a shuffle. But enough down in the dregs with my two Ravage Uncommons might win me the game. I mean, I love doing this live too, so I'm glad you could be here. I am having the most frustrating game. That's not accurate. I'm having a very antagonistic game from the game side of things. I'm having fun because I'm fighting against it. It's not that frustrating because I'm not up against the evil wins condition that hard. Um, I have two escaped ambitions. Can I? I don't think I can shuffle the hero deck that way, but we'll see. Okay, well, anyway, this second one is gained. And that's my turn. Just trying to win this one. I got Warpath. Oh, I got Warpath and I got the Strength and Fate of Future ability. Attack and Fate of Future. This is good. This is a good hand. This is a good hand. 
I wish I had some KOs though. So guess what's coming in next? If you remember, it's Inflict Pain. If this ambition escapes, each other player puts a wound from their discard pile on top of their deck. This one is only three attack. I have a Sinister Clones coming in next, so I gotta be mindful of that. Saving a Shadowed Spider for later, but I will have some decent attack here. Let's start with Long Range Spider Sense. Two attack Spectrum. I do not have Spectrum, unfortunately. That's two hero classes. Um, I often play this before I play Soak Stalking. I don't want to play Shadowed Spider early, so that'll be that. But I do get to play Soak Stalking, though, which does give me one more attack. And it does activate off the team. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs zero KO, if it costs one or two, draw it. If it costs zero, there's a KO for me. Pretty good. I do like how the Spider Friends team seems to rely on the team triggers. I feel like slightly more often than some other cards, team team uh, affiliation. Because some of this Spider Team stuff is pretty insular in the way that they actually work in the comics, so I appreciate that. Okay, two more attack, up to five, and then we got Shadowed Spider. I can play this at the end. One attack plus, one attack for each other. Here, I play this turn that costs one or two. Or one or two. I played two, but that's eight attack. And that's cool, because I can hit two things. Now, the thing about this is, I want to hit the Inflict Pain Ambition. I can also hit 92 Beast, but I don't want 92 Beast. This is my two cost side. Jubilee's a little better. She's, uh, she's also not two cost, but it is Spectrum. Although, a range on the right-hand side will almost always give me Spectrum because I don't have that many. I could hit Craven for seven, but then I'm going to have two Sinister Clones come in and I won't be able to get that ambition out of there. But I also don't want Craven to escape and take the rare Warpath with him. Right-hand side is going to get one, two, three, four, five, five attack. So right-hand side can hit the Ambition. I guess. I can also KO the here gained hero if I really want to. So let me clear two spaces. I'll do the smart thing. Um, I will start with hitting Inflict Pain for three before it gets more powerful because it will as twists come up. So let's get rid of that. I've got five left. Let's hit 92 Jubilee. If I do keep her, she's going to be more useful for me than Beast, even though I have the one attack to spare. So I'll fight her. And then I gain her as a hero. I, f I have a card that, that's not, that's not uh, two or less in the cost department. Hopefully that doesn't trip me up with uh, Symbiote Spidey. Tried not to let that happen, but uh, I did give myself the X-Men 92 in the setup. So turn 18 is going to be those Sinister Clones that come in. And do I have another one? No, it's another 92 Beast, which I'm actually glad is not showing up right now. So another Sinister Clones come in. The bias is going to get shuffled into the deck. And it's going to end up looking like this. I have two Recruit this turn. So I could... Actually, I have an idea. I have an idea, actually, what I want to do here. I'm going to actually uh, clone a two cost. On purpose. Let's start with... Endless Endurance. I get to draw two extra cards at the end of this turn, which is very, very good. Then I'm going to play Toxic Mutations. It's very good with Ravage, too. It gets through the deck faster. Um, two attack, and I activate the power, so I get two more attack. And Fate of Future, so this goes to the bottom of my deck. By the way, look at my deck. One, two, three, four, five. Most of these are going to be Fate of Future cards, I'm pretty sure. At the bottom. Now I've got two agents and a trooper. So here's what my thought was. Um, I'm going to fight Beast and gain him. Or I could fight a Sinister Clones and I could clone Retractable Talons. That way I can send them both undercover on this side. And then if I see any of more of the Venomous Fangs, I can take them and always Cyber Mod draw a card. However, um, maybe hitting Beast would be better. 
Left hand side is going to have only one attack in hand. So I need to be able to hit things. Keep seven cards in deck if possible. Why do you say that? I only have five cards in my deck. So it's going to be um, a reshuffle anyway. For the fate of future things, they can come back. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But um, I could recruit Silk and wall crawl her, which would give me six cards in my deck, but that's not enough. <laughs> sometimes the extra heroes are good. It just doesn't fit with your strategy sometimes. It would actually it wouldn't eaches because if you clone a wall crawl card, wall crawl is only when you recruit it, I believe. So I could recruit Silk and wall crawl her, but the clone would not wall crawl. But I like the way you think about that, because yes, if you can get no deck and then play your faded future cards, that's the best, because you can immediately draw them. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is actually fight Beast after all. So left hand side has a chance of hitting a sinister clone. Because I don't think left hand side has a chance of hitting 92 Bs. So we're going to go with that. Fight it for 5. And then gain him as a hero. And then do I recruit for 2? I guess I could just take retractable talons anyway. Um, I do want to take 2 of these. So I'll, without cloning it, I'll take it. Oh, there's another Venomous Fangs. Also, almost making fun of what I just did. Okay, so I get seven cards drawn, or eight cards drawn. One, two, three, four, five. That's pretty good. Look at that. And yeah, these are going to go to the bottom of the deck when I play them, but it's a lot of attack, and I can probably hit the Mastermind. <laughs> Thor Core are really good in specific scenarios. Notice I haven't given them to anybody in the tournament yet. I will only do that if they're not just completely blocking the whole setup. If they have, there's a reason for them to be included. I don't just want annoying for annoying's sake. That's why I gave some people the baseball game this week, but there's some things in there that make it less, 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 less hurtful. One, two, three, four, five, six, two extra cards, seven, eight, and I got Endless Endurance again, which is a, co a combo I always want to get. If you keep drawing Endless Endurance, then you draw eight cards every turn. Or more if you have multiple Endless Endurance. Okay, turn 19. We've got this Sandman. Sandman's attack is twice the number of villains in the city. And escape each player reveals an instinct hero or gains a wound. So there are four villains in the city. It counts itself. So he counts himself. I'm going to go to eight attack there. And I can't fight anything. So if Craven escapes, by the way, due to um, reasons, I'll KO Warpath. But hopefully I can draw enough with symbiote spidey here to prevent that top two cards of my deck oh a wound and an agent how nice they both cost less than two so i do get to draw them okay well i've got four recruit here i probably should have wall crawled recruit first but i was hoping i get something else yeah, if i had recruited silk first i could have at least gotten two attack no spectrum though still wouldn't have been enough um, I can use Rock Slide now to shatter, which will guarantee nothing, because I can't hit anything. <laughs> I guess if I used Rock Slide, I could have worked with Silk. Yeah, I'm just out of luck here. Even if I shatter the clones, I go down to two, and I don't have two attack. Um, I'm just going to have to hope the next card is not going to push Craven out, otherwise bye-bye Rare Warpath. And my, with my luck, it'll happen to me. Let's do some recruiting. Let's take Cascading Maneuver for two. And let's... Oh, let's take a second Cascading Maneuver for two. Double on that. I basically cloned it anyway. Even though I paid full price. And that's five cards. And there's the rare Symbiote Spidey. The balance of the two cost rares was always interesting for me. Um, they have to be less powerful than normal rares. But they get to be a little more powerful than normal two cost because there's only one of them. Kind of the same strategy as to some of the strength of some of the cards in the um, MCU set. The six cards per hero. Okay.
Okay, let's see what I'm in for. Okay, it's just it's just the strongest ambition in the game. No big deal. And if it escapes, it becomes a master strike and then a scheme twist. So, like I said, no big deal. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Plus, it's 11 attack thanks to the one twist. So, 11. The, uh, the weaker ambitions decide not to show up today. Except for the two cost one. Yep. But I'm gonna have a good turn this turn. So let's get going with that. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna lose all these cards to the bottom of the deck when I play them if I choose to. <clears throat> and there's really no reason not to choose to do that. So Endless Endurance again. I get to draw two cards at the end of this turn. Two extra cards at the end of this turn. Now I will... Let's draw a card. Oh, by the way, um, I do get the ability here. Cards are everywhere. Toxic Mutations. Two attack, plus two, thanks to the strength and faded future. This goes to the bottom. And we're going to do Retractable Talons. I'm going to get the one attack. This one I am going to send over undercover. Uh, pretend that Shield was involved in this. So it goes undercover. But I do get to do Cyber Mod Covert, which is draw a card. So I do draw a card, and it's a Shield Agent. Now, to remind me I have a Covert Undercover, I have a little token. That's my Covert Undercover. Two cost rares and clone rares are both neat because they balance strong without being broken. Although the uh, Stepford Cuckoos being able to extend the villain deck is kind of wild. Okay, I've got one more attack. Um, I have six thanks to all the cards I played already. Wow. Um, let's do this. Detect vibrations a couple of times. Oh, I can't put this. <laughs> That's where my camera is. I'll put it right here. There we go. Detect vibrations. Four more times. Up to ten. Top two cards of the villain deck. Hey, what order should I put these back in? There we go. That, that's better. Okay. And then Faded Future. We're both going to be played. It's going to chain. I got a second one. So I better I better hit Rack and Rune before it gets even more stronger. Faded Future. These are all going to the bottom. And then one, two, three, Recruit. So I know there's two twists coming. So that means Rack and Rune is about to go up to 13 attack. Maybe 14 if they keep chaining. And that's the worst one. Although, I could go 3, 6, and I could stack up an extra clone. I could clone Venomous Fangs twice. One from the HQ, one from not. Um, I could go 3, 3, and then Sandman will be uh, 6. I could, go, I could hit all three of these. Craven and both Sinister clones this turn. Also, uh, the Mastermind, by the way, um, is minus one attack for each bias in my victory pile. I don't have any, but he has only 11 attack. So I can hit the, the Mastermind and a Sinister Clone. But I could also hit Rack and Ruin before it gets even more powerful, which would give me enough to hit that and a Sinister Clone. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. Um, let's hit this for 11. Before it buffs up. And for three attack, we're going to hit a Sinister Clone and probably clone Venomous Fangs next uh, next recruit because it has a printed cost of four or less. Yeah, I do want to clone that. And I get to clear up two HQ spaces this way. If you clone and there's two of them in the HQ, you clone the other one from the HQ. So Cyber Mod Covert Covert draw a card. I need one more of those fighty cards to get Cyber Mod double level Covert, but I'm very close to doing that. Um, so I will clone the second one here. Sweet. And two Endless Endurance comes in. I really like seeing that. And that's the end of this turn. I do get to draw eight cards thanks to the previous Endless Endurance. Helps me go through my deck faster. Get the Fate of Future. Oh, so close. I wish I had an instinct for Down in the Dregs, a second one, because then I could draw whatever Fate of Future card I put. Another last. I think I'm going to end up winning this game after that initial struggle because I have time to build my decks up, but maybe not. Who knows? Turn 21. There's our first twist from the pair. So stack it next to the scheme, play another card from the villain deck, and guess what? The extra card from the villain deck, oh, I have to show the villain deck for you to see it, is the other twist that we already saw. So I stacked that one. Now I play another card from the villain deck, which is going to be probably a third twist, right? No, it's Professor X. And if he escapes, he does some interesting stuff. If he escapes, 
He becomes a new Mastermind. He gets Master Strike stack, two heroes from the HQ with the highest cost next to 92 Professor X. He gets plus one attack for each hero stack there. Players can recruit the top hero in that stack. So this setup, by the way, potentially has three Masterminds. You have the Sinister Six, you have Professor X, and you have a Mastermind from the escaped, uh, one of the escaped, uh, oh wait, yes, you have one that becomes, an Emission that becomes a Mastermind, if it escapes. <sighs> okay. Um... I'm still not going to send retractable talents undercover, but I do have to keep in mind that I have Thwip here, and in order to play it, I have to... Nine total masterminds, yeah. Um, if you really wanted that VP, I don't know, we just hit him other villains. So, to play this card, you must put two cards from your hand on top of your deck. If I put the two agents, that's going to be four, five, six, seven cards, seven attack. And I can hit Craven, And I think that's worth it even though I'll have two agents at the top of my deck for later. So let's play it. Uh, I'll play this by putting two agents on the top of the deck and play all my attack for four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to go ahead and hit uh, Craven the Hunter because that rare is not coming out of here anytime soon. And if he escapes, he'll KO it. And I don't want that to happen. So I take Craven out. Okay, and I have a, more of a clear city than I've had in a while. Salmon, by the way, is only at six. He's probably going to go up to eight in a second, but... Uh, for accuracy's sake, we'll give him his six right now. Well, I got rid of the 10 attack ambition, so maybe I will use Rock Sled on something else. Look at that. I have um, Shadowed Spider with four... Uh, with three other two-cost cards. That'll even work with the sidekick. Turn 22 is a bystander. How nice. I did shuffle some extra ones in. Go with Professor X. Um, I don't get any uh, superpowers here, but I do have uh, Spider Silk Webbing, three Recruit, and I put the next card here. I Recruit on the top of my deck, and all I've got is just a bunch of Recruit. Four, five, six, seven. Wow, that's enough to get Warpath. And I've got one. So do I take Warpath or do I rest and get rid of my wounds? I'm pretty sure I take Warpath for the seven. Again, he's very good. Um, he gets one attack every time you in, uh, reveal or look at stuff. This side doesn't have a ton of that. But it has some, like with uh, Ravages looking at the villain deck. But this rare cares about your deck. So this is technically much better for the left-hand side. But there's other Warpath cards I can get that investigate. So I'm still going to take it. Uh, it's rare. And I like it. Um, and it goes on top of my deck, too, which is cool. Thanks to uh, Spidey. And there's another Detect Vibrations there. Definitely uh, better than uh, resting right now, I think. And here it is. Two, three, four, five, six. Also, it triggers both down to the dregs. So I get to draw two cards on the bottom of the deck, which is not a reveal. So that doesn't count. Still. It was a lot stronger on my last game, but I'll, I'll take it. Turn 23 is another clone, so we got a full city. I'm just gonna move this down in anticipation because this will clone it. It is another clone. Oh, it was one. I still have to shuffle a bystander in, but I don't have to search. Oh, hello. Okay, so now I gotta adjust Sandman's attack. That's 5 and 10, so he's at 10 attack, and this D10 doesn't go to 10 because it's a 0. 10! We can count. I'm going to have a good turn this turn, though. I'm going to slide this uh, covert over for a second. What to play first? What to play first? Um, I do have Spectrum, Instinct, Strength, and Covert. So guess what? I finally get to... That's why I didn't put it over there. I don't have a good spot for this little token. I guess up here. No, it's not even good there. I'm gonna sneak it over here. Sneak it right there. All right, so starting with Silk. Uh, one attack, Spectrum draw a card. I drew a card, how oh, cool. Now we'll try uh, Long Range Spider Sense, Spectrum. Reveal the top card of your deck if it costs two or less. Draw. Do I want to do a wall crawl recruit first? I can't. There isn't anything, so I'm just going to do this. It is a trooper, so I do draw that. 
Next is a trooper, four attack, and I've got one, two, three agents, four, three recruit. Now, if I play Shadow Spider now, I will get five, six, seven attack. I could get eight if I play Rock Slide first. And I think this is a decent time to shatter something. I could hit Professor X and a Sinister Clone if I do that. So we're going to shatter Professor X. And get that Bystander. I could shatter Sandman, but he's going to get it weaker. So let's shatter Professor X down to four attacks. Now Rock Slide still counts as a card I played this turn. Oh, and I, I forget, I use blue when they've reduced their attack because that makes sense to me. So when I play Shadowed Spider, I get one base attack, plus one for each other hero I played this turn that costs one or two. I no longer have Rock Slide, he went back to the sidekick deck, but I did play him. So that's one, two for the two soap cards, three for Rock Slide. So that gives me eight total attack, which means I can start by hitting Professor X for half his attack, getting that bystander rescued and it's a standard bystander i'm just gonna weaken goblin in a little bit down to four i can also hit a sinister clone let's hit the one in the sewers thank you for the water he goes boy am i talking a lot all right let's go ahead and hit uh sinister clones finally i can clone a spider i can't believe it's been until 20 turn 23 until i got to do that over here i guess i cloned a spider on the non-spider side first so that's blowing up. And I will clone the only spider in the HQ, which is Spider Sense Tingling. I KO'd one. I think there's one left. I really hope there is. This is not a wasted clone. And that's not a wall crawl card either. Oh, and it's the next one that showed up. How convenient for me. Cool. Productive turn. I'm happy about that. Let's go. And not having the KO power is, is what's hurting me. And there are heroes here that could do it. I KO'd Warpath. But it's not like I could have gotten that uh, formation anyway. I'll adjust Sandman's attack in a second. Let's go ahead and see what I'm pulling from the villain deck. It is a uh, secret escape tunnels ambition. If it escapes, patrol the sewers. If it's a villain there, it escapes. Which there will be if it escapes, most likely. Anyway, so uh, Sandman is down to eight. Quite a number of villains in the city. But I got some good stuff here including some Faded Future draws. I can do a combo. So let's begin with Superhuman Senses. Three attack. Whenever I reveal or look at any number of cards in my deck this turn, you get plus one attack. Now I'll choose a number one or more. Investigate for a card of that cost. I have five cards in my deck. I think the Faded Future is stuck at the very bottom. But if I put things in the bottom of my deck with Investigate, then I'll draw that. But I want to draw what's already there, I think. And I forget what's there. I'm going to say three. I forget what costs I have there. Two zero cost cards. I have to leave them on the top so that I can draw from the bottom. So there's a thing on the top, even though I normally would tuck those to the bottom. So I did get to investigate, which is a look at stuff. So that is one attack from Warpass Rare. Now I get my combo here. Down on the dregs to recruit. Draw a card from the bottom of your deck. Bottom of my deck is Perfect Vibrations. Now, I want to do this again, so I'm going to play perfect, perfect Vibrations first, and then Down on the Dregs, because I forget if I have the other one down there anyway. So, Detect Vibrations, up to 8 attack, and here is why he is so good. Top two cards of the villain deck, 1, 2. I got Craze Charge, Ambition, and Jubilee. Craze Charge going on top. Okay, and Fate of Future goes to the bottom of the deck, my deck. I'll play the other Down on the Dregs, two more Recruit, and I draw it again from the bottom of my deck. I get to play it again. It's so good. Once again, I'll look at the top two cards of the villain deck. But that doesn't work for Warpath because that would be my own deck. So up to 12 attack. And it goes back to the bottom of my deck. Faded Future. Uh, Beast does not trigger. He gets me two more attack. I'm up to 14 attack. And I have two recruit. So here's where things are starting to take off. The Mastermind. I have no bystanders on this side, I don't believe. So uh, the Mastermind is at 11 attack exactly. I can hit the Mastermind and the clones. But I can pretty much clear the city. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I can clear the entire city. And. Oh, but I don't. There's nothing in the HQ I want to clone that's cost 4 or less. So I should probably save those clones for the spider side. 
So instead, what I'm going to do is hit the Mastermind and... Oh, if I do that, I can only hit the Mastermind of the Sinister Clones. But I'm not at risk of losing the setup. I have this strong desire to clear the HQ, but I don't really need to uh, clear the city, but I don't really need to. Left-hand side, by the way, has two, three, four, five, six, and a card draw attack. Do they have additional strength added to the base of the scheme? Yes, they do. Um, so this one should be more than five. It's eight. Thank you for reminding me. I got the last two. I wasn't going to hit this turn, but it's good to know. They get plus one attack for each scheme twist stat next to the scheme. There's been three scheme twists played. Don't apologize. That's what I, I needed to, to put that out there. Uh, I will still say that for the next turn, though. I don't want this to escape. It's in the sewers. Chances are I'll be okay. And I need to start hitting the Mastermind before the fill-in deck runs out. So I'm going to hit the Mastermind without thinking about it too much longer. Okay, because I got some good stuff. Each villain in the city captures a bystander. Oh, maybe I don't want to do that. <laughs> maybe I don't want to do that because then they're going to probably escape. You know what? I changed the plans. I forgot that he had that. Darn. I have to clear the city first. That's too gross. Okay, he survives another day. I didn't reveal anything with this adapted mastermind, so I'm taking that back sneakily. All right, we're going to we're gonna waste some clones here, unfortunately. Let's start with the uh, secret escape tunnels for eight. Leave me with six attack. On the right. And uh, I will clear both of these clones. So we'll spend three and three. I stack up two clones. I guess what I could do is see if I... Um, hmm. I really just want to get Detect Vibrations, even though I have two clones stacked up. I could go for a sidekick and try to clone that. But I'd still only clone it once. No, it's still better that I take the third and final Detect Vibrations. It is so very good. I'll take it for six. I'll waste those two clones. But now Sam has only two attack, at least for now. I didn't reveal anything extra, right? No. Not for Warpath. I will hit the Goblin later. I have to reshuffle the deck now. I really want to thin my deck so I can get back to these Ravage cards, but very lacking on the KO. And I got rid of the one Warpath card that would have helped me there. And that's my bad. All right, moving over. I'm on turn number 25. Got some attack power here coming in. I also have uh, the Craze Charge Ambition. That's the one we looked at before. It is at six attack. And thank goodness these lower attack ones were saved for last because it offsets some of the boosting they're getting. So uh, starting with 92 Jubilee, Spectrum, you get plus two attack, has a base of two. Um, Jubilee, Brother Cat, and that's totally fine with me. So four total attack uh, because I have one Silk and that provides the second two classes for the third for Spectrum. Speaking of Spectrum, I get to play Cascading Maneuver, which is one more attack and I get to draw a card thanks to Spectrum. Uh, it is an Agent. How quaint. Look at that. One, two, three, four more recruit. Four total recruit and one more attack, actually. I'm at six and four. Uh, Salmon is at four attack, by the way. I have just enough to hit that ambition, which I will do without any hesitation for a six. So goodbye. That's the name of the game here. And I got four recruit. Let's keep going with the two, uh, two cost thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take long range spider sense. And I'll take one of the Dark Strengths. Somebody's going to have amazing luck with cloning a lot of early spiders. That's what I was hoping to do. As I knock cards off the hero deck. Didn't get to do it. But somebody's going to take advantage of that. And now look at my deck. I've got a lot of spiders in here. So i got a lot of drawing to do. And that's exactly what I want to happen. I'm going to end up with some pretty fun decks at the end of this. All in all, my strategy is kind of working from my hero choices. I have one Spidey deck on one side and one Faded Future deck on the other. So that's exactly what I planned for. So I can't be too upset. Best laid plans, right? Move it over. 
Okay, turn 26. There's Jubilee. Remember her? Back to four for Sandman. And let's rearrange the villain deck. Let's see what we got. So four attack. Top two cards of the villain deck are... Shadowy Disciple, a scary ambition, and a sinister clone. I want the sinister clones first before that ambition. So, Fate of Future, going to the bottom of the deck. We'll play a second one. Four more attack. Go to the bottom of the deck. And uh, we got Toxic Mutations that will not get to Fate of Future to the bottom. But I have an 11th attack. And two recruits. Okay. Now I think it's a good time to hit the Mastermind because... Um, they'll get bystanders, but I think I'm okay with that. Let's hit the mastermind for reals for... Actually, no bystanders on this side. Only on the left side. 11 attack, full. Let's try that again. Fight each villain in the city captures a bystander. So one for Sandman gets the undercover agent. And uh, one for Jubilee gets the standard bystander. And that's going to be my first tactic game. Alright, now we adapt into whoever comes next. Who's it going to be? It's going to be... Ba -ba -da -da. Sandwoman again. Plus to attack each villain in the city. I need to start keeping track of that. So right now she's at 10 attack. And that will go up. Two recruit left. I don't want to take these spiders over here. It's a sidekick for me. And it is a standard sidekick. Always welcome. And my faded future cards are trapped at the bottom of the deck. And I don't have Cybermod Double Cobra, I just have the one, remember? So, that could be better. But it's not. This side gets to draw a lot. Hope we get to draw to something good. Turn 27 is that Sinister Clone I revealed. So, another one comes in. Maybe this is one. Nope, that's an ambition. I already looked at it, I forgot that I did. So, a second uh, clone comes in. I shuffle the bystander in. This is what we're looking at. I can finally, hopefully, clone some spiders. We shall see. Two ambition villains have escaped. How many are left? That's uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's three more left in the villain deck. I'm close to the, the, the point where I won't lose to the scheme. Let's start playing some cards. I go with, uh, first, Spider Sense Tingling, top two cards in my deck. Unless they're Jubilee, this should work. Of course, Jubilee's there. <laughs> I, had, I shuffled the entire deck, and she's right at the top. Well, um, that's going to mess up my entire strategy. The one, see, this what happens when you have one non-two cost card in a Spidey deck. It messes up the whole thing. I couldn't really help that one. Well, um, I guess I will do this again and draw the card that's not Jubilee and it is going to be a shield agent Jubilee goes back on top man what a bummer and uh, Silk Stocking will reveal Jubilee again and neither KO it or draw it so that's what I get and I end up my turn with one attack I thought that was going to be a lot better than it was and that's putting me in trouble here two three four she just wanted to be a spider I can't really blame her. Um, I guess I could have done the Dark Strength draw. Man, I, I always I always miss the wall crawl because I get into such a formula when I do these of uh, playing my cards and then recruiting. But I, ha I have to remind myself when those cards wall crawl, I have to check first because I could have done this in a very different order. Such is the such is the way of playing these games the way I do. But that's okay. I won't sweat it. You learn from your mistakes. I'm going to recruit and wall crawl. Dark strength. And, oh, and there's Silk's Rare, which also has wall crawl. That, this could have been a much different turn than I did. I uh, made it. Uh, check this out. Wall crawl spectrum. Reveal the top four cards of your deck, but in combination of those cards with a total cost of two or less into your hand, put the rest back in any order. So that is mine as well. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I might have been able to clone one of those too. Not the rare, of course. At least my next turn is going to be good those two and I drew Jubilee so now she won't get in my way let's see what happens turn 28 shocker comes in each player feels an instinct hero or discards a card silk is very very good 
Um, no instinct. I will discard this wound without any hesitation. Left hand side has no instinct somehow, and I will discard an, uh, an agent. By the way, Sand Woman is uh, plus two for each villain, so she's going to change. So two, four, six, eight, ten. She's at uh, 16. This die doesn't go for 16. She gets real powerful. I'll adjust this as I go. Um, here we go. We've got spider silk webbing. We got a, a pseudo wall crawl happening. Unfortunately, I got one covert in my victory pile, not two. See, there it is. So, no drawing cards for me. Just two attack each, which is still pretty decent. One, two, three, four, and I got two recruit as well. Um, I can get a five cost, and I can hit. Uh, I can get Jubilee over here. Sandman is a lot stronger now, by the way. Uh, let's go ahead and take out this Jubilee for four. Spectrum will be nice over here, plus I'll get my city space clear. Um, also, the fight of animation, because I'm going to fight the game and all that good stuff. So she's gained Rescue a Bystander. And I am... I always forget that Rare has Spectrum and use the ability anyway. Hmm. Yeah, um... I, I do that with, um, sometimes I'll read, I will just read ambush effects, fight effects as ambush effects and do them because I go into autopilot and I got to make sure not to do that. So I have a lot of good stuff here. I've got endless endurance. I've got spider silk webbing and I've got toxic mutations. All good stuff. Let me see what I want to do. Um, let me think. I think the best card for me to take right now is Endless Endurance. They will stack up and give me a ton of cards. Which is great. And that's all I'm going to do, right? No, wait. Yes, I got I fought Jubilee. That's all I can do. So, give me more of those. Counteract some of this KOing I haven't been able to do. I still have to hit five more masterminds. This is a lot. This is a lot. This is a lot to do. Hopefully, I have the time in the villain deck to do it. Turn 29. I can't forget. Oh, bystander. I can't forget that the scheme twist play extra cards, so it's a smaller villain deck than I think it is. Okay, so adjusting attacks. She's at 14, and Salmon is at uh, 8. And I think that's the only adjustment I have to do right now. All right, let's start with the rare silk. She is very good. And here's why. One attack. Wall crawl. Spectrum. Do I have spectrum? Tech. Range. And strength. Yeah, her being tech really helps out with the spectrum. On the rare. Reveal the top four cards of your deck. Put any combination of those. And I get this one wrong all the time. I'm going to read it very carefully. Put any combination of those cards. The total cost of two or less into your hand. Put the rest back in any order. Um, I've played this incorrectly in the past. By drawing all the cards that cost two or less. That's not what this does. You have to do some math. So let's do the math. One, two, three, four top four cards of my deck. And I have a zero cost and a zero cost. Those don't count towards it. Um, a total cost of two or less. So I'm going to draw Spider Sense Tingling so I can draw Shadow Spider later. Because zero plus zero plus two is a total cost of two. Math is fun. Okay, we'll play Jubilee. Again, I have Spectrum with the ranged. So that's one, two. Three, four more attack, but five total. Let's go with um, Spider Sense Tingling. I'm trying to remember what... Oh, no, I should do um, Dark Strength first because I know the top card of my deck it costs two. So one more attack. Top card of my deck is still that Shadowed Spider. So I get two more attack. This is going well. Let's begin with Spider Sense Tingling. Top two cards of my deck. Begin, continue. I'll draw both Shadowed Spider and Long Range Spider Sense. And keep the spider ramp going. I've got a long range spider sense to play to attack the top part of my deck. I do have spectrum. It's two or less than I draw it. Let's keep it going. Spectrum. This is what I want with a two card, two cost spidey deck. Draw a card. I have no other cards that don't cost two, so it's fine to use. I've got long range spider sense. Two more attack up to 13. Top part of my deck. Cost two or less than I draw it. Let's take a chance on dark strength. Oh, shadow spider is going to really work here. Okay, top card of my deck. 
cost zero, so I don't get the bonus. But that's okay. And imagine if I had the Warpath's rare, I'd be getting so much extra attack on top of this. Okay, Cascading Maneuver. One more attack, and I draw into that gray. Okay, now I will play my grays. That's a one, two more attack, up to 17. And 18 with the Trooper. One Recruit here. And finally, Shadowed Spider, up to 19 here. Plus one attack for each other hero. I play this one that costs one or two. That'll be one, not Jubilee. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm at uh, 20 on this die. And I'm at 27 total attack. And this is the power of a spider deck. Okay. By the way, Grim Tracker is one I can clone that uh, can work with the spider deck, but also works with more passive on the other side. Now, Sand Woman powers up based on villains in the city, so I should probably clear the city out a little bit. And I definitely have the attack to do it. And I can double clone Grim Tracker if I really want to. I don't think there's enough long range spider sense left in the villain deck to clone twice. I have two. There could be five of them. Uh, or there could be... Actually, there might be just enough to clone twice. I only have two. None got carried off or anything. So I'm pretty sure I can do that. Anyway, um, let's fight stuff. Starting with Sam is going to be weaker later. So we're going to go with Shocker for five. Down to two. Fight him. Rescue that standard bystander. And as we do this, we weaken Sandman and we weaken Sandwoman. So we'll take care of that. They both have the same similar effects, and I love that. So we're going to take care of both Sinister clones. I'm loading up two clones of heroes that cost four or less. Down to 19 after the first one. And we're going to go down to the second one after... Yep. Down to 16 after fighting the second one. Now, math. Sandman is at two. And Sandwoman is at eight. So I'm going to hit Sandman now for two. That's the weakest he can be right now. So to 14. There we go. And uh, take out Sandman. We just cleared the city. And uh, Undercover Agent. Player of your choice. Game the Shield Officer. It's going to go to the right-hand side. It's a standard officer. Rescue that. And now Sandman is back to base. She's at six attack. So I'm going to... What's her fight effect? I guess we'll find out. Oh yeah, the next player... Oh! Did I do this wrong earlier? I think I did, because they're so similar. I think I did the... Even after I double-checked it, I think I did this wrong. I think the other side... I did the fight effect for the Master Strike. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. None of us caught it. But I'll do this correctly now. Um... The next player may either recruit or attack in their next turn, but not both. I think that's how I did it. Anyway, that's fine. Um, I took out the mastermind, so we're good there. Goodbye. And next up... Where does this go? Okay. Hmm. I doubt. Let's see if I can hit the second one. I don't think I can. I do have eight attack left. I hope I remember the right-hand side is restricted. Okay, next mastermind is Electro. I can almost hit Electro. I'm one attack short. The master strike is each player discards three cards and draws a card adapt. Fight, you may draw any number of cards, then draw. Discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards adapt. Man, that hurts. I could have got two hits this turn. But that's fine. I did some really good stuff. And that's all I can do right now. Okay, so right-hand side can either fight or recruit, but not both. I was going to attack and clone the last time. Oh, so it did happen on that turn. Okay, good. Thank you. I could not remember. I think what I did was when I checked it, I read the wrong rule and I said I did it right. But initially, I did it right the first time. So I just made it extra complicated for myself. As long as I played it right. All right, we get to draw from the bottom of the deck this turn, which is cool. Uh, turn 30 is another scheme twist, so there you go. That is twist number four. Okay, stack it next to the scheme. Play another card from the villain deck. 
Uh, let's do it. Another card is Banker. So this is going to Electro 2099. Look at that. Electro in the bank, huh? I feel like he has a, a track record there. Okay, Warpath, here we go. It's going to give me three attack, plus one after I investigate. So I'll choose a number one or more. I don't know, I'll choose three again. I don't think I have, I think a lot of threes. Yep, I got it. So I investigate for three. I won't tuck the agent because I'm gonna be drawing from the bottom of the deck. I can do it twice. This is great. Um, I got an extra attack for investigating. Let's draw and play and draw and play. Two recruit draw card from the bottom of my deck. It is Detect Vibrations. Very nice. I'll play Detect Vibrations. Four attack up to eight. Top two cards of the villain deck. One and two. We've got a Biascanner and Breakout. Um, let's give another Biascanner to the Mastermind. So Biascanner first, then Breakout. And uh, Faded Future. I'll put it to the bottom. I will draw it again. Yeah, I forgot about Venom, but you're right. I might be able to hit him for free. Uh, 12 attack. Back to the bottom of the deck you go. I have not even played my Grays. I am at 14 attack. And two more recruit. Okay, uh, easy hit on Electro, so let's go ahead and do that. Five left. I can discard. Oh, okay, maybe I should uh, backtrack a little because I didn't reveal anything. Do I want to discard and draw my Grays? I think I do. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's not play my agents and troopers. This is a cool thing I can do with this because it wasn't a hidden tactic um, like it normally is. So down to four and down to three. Um, let's discard all four cards and draw four cards. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that was definitely a good thing to do. And uh, let's adapt. Who's coming out? Oh, I got the bystander too. I gotta remember that. I get two recruit for the bank. I'm not gonna probably recruit Silk there, but that's good to know. Three of the six, Sinister Six left. I might hit another one this turn. It is going to be the oh, there's Venom. I might hit him on this side anyway. <laughs> Which is a little bit insult to injury. So there he is. Yeah, he gets minus one for each card I have that costs two. This is the wrong side to get it. Um, let's see what I end up getting. I haven't played a tech. But uh, we're going to play another Detect Vibrations. Up to seven. Go to the bottom of the deck. We're going to play another Down on the Dregs. Two more Recruit. And I'll draw it again. I love Ravage so much. Eleven attack. Back to the bottom you go. And... Beast, two more attack. No tech play, but that's fine. And uh, I'm just gonna hit Venom for full price. I don't have any cards that cost two. You may gain a hero that cost two from the HQ or KO pile. Ooh, what's in the KO pile? I know what's in the KO pile. Check it out. Venomous Fangs. Slider Silk Webbing, Venomous Fangs. Warpath. I'll take Warpaths for. Uh... <laughs> he, he gives me Warpath and not a spider. That's a good one. Um, and he adapts. That was fun. Okay. Two Sinister Six left. No final blow here. So let's see who I get. It is Vulture again. Oh, he gets plus attacking to the highest VP value of any villain in the escape pile, rooftops, or bridge. Escape pile's pretty full. Highest VP value is I got one, three, three, one, two, one. Um, Wolverine would have the highest, but he doesn't have any because he's a gainable. Oh! The highest DP value, I believe, is 4 from the Ambition, but let me read the scheme very carefully. Yes. They are worth 4 VP. That is what it says. So when I look at the Mastermind, it doesn't say printed value, highest DP value, so he gets plus 4 from the Ambitions in the Escape Pile. That's rough. I didn't see that one coming. But he's at 11 attack then. Permanently. Until it goes up. Unless it goes up with a 5 VP value enemy. So that'll stop there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use the banker here. For seven, I'm gonna get another endless endurance because if I can keep that going, that'll be great. So endless endurance from under the bridge is mine. And that was my card. I don't know 
know why I did that. Okay, and a spider. I could take it, but I'm going to end my turn right there. I have enough stuff. And I might empty my deck for a big turn with a Faded Future. It's, I thought it was going to be a spider's game, and the MVP has turned out to be Ravage. As in, every game I've played with Ravage in it, he's been the MVP. It just keeps ending up that way. Even with the very little... I have not KO'd... Is this right? I have not KO'd a single gray? This game? I think that's correct. Anyway, uh, turn 31. There we go. We put that there. Do you remember? I didn't. Now, um... Let's start with... Whip. I gotta put two cards in my hand on top of my deck. Um... No, I won't start with that, actually. I will start with Long Range Spider Sense. Okay, top card of my deck costs two or less. Yep, Shadowed Spider. Um, and I'm, I'm not, don't have any more other draws here, so I'll just play Flip now. Up to six. Let's put the two Shield Agents on top. And then seven attack from the Trooper. We've got Retractable Talents and, sorry, an eight attack. No Cyber Mod, but I don't know, I'll send this undercover now. Nope, no good reason. More VP, just to make sure. Um, and then I will play Shadowed Spider, which will give me one more attack plus one for each hero that costs two I played. That does count the one that went undercover because I played it. Oh, I didn't have... See, I told you I was going to mess that up. I, I uh, assumed that um, Flip was tech because I don't look at the rares. Oh, I got to backtrack now. Where was I? I got to find the undercover... Uh, talents okay and I draw from spider-man so I got I got a way back up because I, I did that wrong so what was my starting hand? I don't even remember what my starting hand was I put two cards top of my deck um, shadow spider was there how far could I have gone so I could have I could have sent him undercover and drew a card. I think I could have gotten to this anyway. Um, because I would have drawn with Talons and I would have gotten to Spectrum. No, I wouldn't have Spectrum at all. I, I do not remember what my hand was when I started this. I had, I think, one agent? I gotta, like, rewind and go check what I did. Anyway, we're, we're near the end of it. I'm not gonna... I'm gonna give myself the least beneficial hand because I don't remember what it was. So we're just gonna say it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Because the only other card was Shadowed Spider. Anyway, so let's say I did play this out. Um, I would Retractable Talent, Center to Cover like I did. And draw Shadowed Spider. I don't have Spectrum. I would play Thwip. So that would give me one total attack. Two, three, four, five. Um, put two cards on top of my deck. I don't have Spectrum, so I would put this on top and save it for later. Although, actually, six, seven, eight, nine, and eleven. If I did play it without Spectrum, I just would be able to hit the Mastermind. Hit the mastermind. So I'll put the two Agents on top. Apologies if this is not exactly how it went. I think this still is kosher here. Two attack up to seven attack. No spectrum ability. Eight. And then Shadowed Spider gives me nine, ten, eleven. And that should be just enough in my calculations to do this. Okay. I believe that was a successful backtrack. So fight, you may move a villain to another city space. If another villain is already there, swap them. Adapt. So no, nobody to move. So I'll blow up Vulture, and I will take the Bystander, and there's one Mastermind left. It is Dr. Octopus, seeing for the first time this game, Dr. Octopus gets plus four attack unless I play at least eight cards or a hero that costs eight this turn. Master Strike, each player discards cards whose total cost is at least eight or gains a wound. Adapt. Fight, you may gain a hero from the HQ who costs at least six. Adapt. 
All right, as soon as I take out Dr. Octopus, $20.99, that is the game. Not great results as far as com competition, but I'm still glad I was able to hopefully pull out a victory. I don't see how I lose at this point, especially with the way the right-hand side looks. I had my cards right. I gained Shadow uh, from Silk's card draw. Thank you. Okay. All right. A successful backtrack was achieved. Turn 32 is a breakout, which I believe we revealed already. Let's end this. Oh, maybe I can't. I don't have enough attack at the Mastermind. I'm not going to play eight cards. Yeah, I actually can't win this turn. I'll play both Detect Vibrations, which will uh, reveal the top two cards of the villain deck. I will put them in this order so that uh, this twist is next. Vulture's on top. I'll send them both to the bottom of the deck. That's four. That's eight. And then Warpath. Draw two extra cards at the end of this turn. And two more recruit. So let me give the attack value to the ambition. That's exactly eight. So four plus the four twist played. It's at eight, so I'll hit it for eight exactly. Cool. More VP for me. And I'll end, I'll end my turn there because the game's going to be over soon. Actually, no. I'll take Grim Tracker. It's a good card to take. For two. Okay. One, two, three. They're all at the bottom. This, these three cards take out the Mastermind by themselves. So the, the, the real trick's going to see if uh, the left-hand side can take out the Mastermind. Four, five, six... Seven, eight, kind of makes the warpath. Oh, and I have two warpaths in my hand, so that would be uh, ten cards on that next turn. All right, is this the last turn or is the next one the last turn? This one might actually be the last turn. Turn twenty, uh, turn thirty-three is Vulture, who comes in, is ambushed as he moves to the rooftops if anybody's there, but nobody's there, so he just stays in the sewers. And Vulture in the sewers sounds awful, but let's go. I do have Spectrum this turn. I have Range, Strength, and Instinct. So let's actually do the thing now. Here we go. Uh, I'll save the draw card in case Jubilee pops up. So we're going to go with uh, Long Range Spider Sense. Two attack. Top card of my deck is Dark Strength. So I draw that. We're going to move on to Spider Sense Tingling. No, we'll take a chance on Dark Strength. I think this is a good thing to do. Um, one attack. Top card of my deck. It costs zero. That was a, not a smart thing to do. I do have a wall crawl here. I gotta remind myself before I start to doing anything else crazy. Um, let's go with Cascading Maneuver. Top two cards on my deck. Spider Sense Tingling. I draw both of these. Let's uh, let's do a smart thing. Let's play my two recruit one two. We're gonna pick up Cascading Maneuver because it has wall crawl, and uh, we'll put it on top of my deck. Hey, what's up? This game. So. This is a setup with, um, you probably saw it, um, tons of cloning, lots of spiders, and I was not able to clone a spider until turn 23. And that's exactly how this game has gone. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, okay, I wall crawled that, so now I can draw it with spider sense tingling. That's the wrong button. Here we go. Top two cards of my deck, one and two. No Jubilee yet. Let's keep it going. Second Spider Sense Tingling. Top two cards of my deck. Um, there's Dark Strength and a Trooper goes into my hand. Let's move everybody over. I'm going to try Dark Strength and see what's there. I only have three attack. That's wild. All right. One more attack. Top part of my deck. Yep. Still not going to get the bonus attack. A Trooper. Five. Now i got to do my uh, Cascading Maneuver general card draws. Does give me one more attack. Six. I draw... <laughs> Uh, agent. Yeah, I hope you have fun with it. Uh, seven. Attack, and I draw. There we go. There's Silk. Watch me reveal Jubilee now. Eight attack. Um, <laughs> I'm choosing to read the first message as canon. So I'm so sorry. It's on the wiki now. Okay. Spectrum, build the top four cards of your deck. One, two, three, four. Hey! This is a total cost of two. One, two, three, four. I draw everything. Let's keep going. I, I can't stop until I keep drawing all the cards. All right. And an a, a trooper. All right. In there. Um, ten attack. And yeah. 
Um, I have one because of how many cards I've played. But let's just keep going. One, two, three, four, five, recruit. So looking back at the Mastermind real quick. The Mastermind um, gets plus four attack. Let's have played at least eight cards. I've definitely played at least eight cards. So the Mastermind's at eight. Unfortunately, I can't hit Vulture. So Vulture's going to go away. But uh, I'm just going to go and hit the Mastermind for the final tactic. Okay. You may gain a hero from the HQ who's cost at least eight. I don't. There isn't anybody. But that is going to be the last tactic for the Sinister Six. Point ninety nine, And we have beat this Sinister setup in an awkward fashion, but we did it. Very awkward. Extremely awkward. Oh, man. All right. Well, if I was actually competing in the tournament, I would definitely play this again because my escape pile is ridiculous. Um, let me go ahead and just give you my info on what happened. Let me give the rewards for those who said I was going to win. And that was pretty much everybody. So um, let, me, let me do that right now. It was a win. So there. Let's see how I did. So I need to tell you what my VP was. And then I'll tell you how many villains in the escape pile. So VP on the left-hand side. Thank you for all the GGs. I appreciate that. So... Here we go. I, I I had confidence that I would. As long as I got those ambitions out of the way, I think I'd be okay. And I, uh, I'm glad I was. So, 4, 7, 11, 13, 14, 18, 22, 26, 28, 29, and then bystanders, 30, 31, 32, 33, and then some tactics. Um, oh, I forgot that Dr. Octopus is worth 8. That's so cool. 39, 45, 51, 59 on the left-hand side, so 59, just so I can get a visual for myself, I should start doing this, 59, VP on the left, right-hand side, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 14, 18, not as much over here, 24, 30, 36, still pretty good, 38 on this side, so three and eight. Not bad for a total VP count. And then here's, um, I took the, 33 turns is gonna be a lot longer than a lot of people are gonna get with uh, early cloning of spiders. So I would not rank very high, but I don't think everybody's gonna win this either. So the fact that I won is still pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna be last, but I'm, I'm prepared to eat my words on that. Because my escapes, how many escaped villains? One, two, three, four, bystander five, six, bystander seven, eight. That's eight escapes. And that is no good for the escape ranking. I'm gonna be, I would be dead last in that category, but I don't mind because that was a fun game and uh, I hope you have fun with this setup as well. I gotta go check to see if other um, results are coming in. But uh, if nobody has any other questions about their setups this week, that is it for my stream. I'll be back next week with whatever one of the week five setups are gonna be. Have you said where you would have ranked on the previous weeks? I didn't. I never actually plugged that in. Um, I could go back and do it if I wanted to, but nobody really asked for it. Um, I think I would have done middle of the road for pretty much all three. I don't think I would have won any of them. Um, I don't think I would have lost any of them. So right now, I'd probably be in one of the middle pods right now with an average score, I think. Um, this one might put me down for a week five if I were to be in that one. But... Uh, Oh, by the way, I never noticed that I should have set Mastermind hits to six this whole time. It says six out of five. It was actually six because it's a sinister six. Um, anyway, thanks for coming to the stream, you guys. I hope you have fun with the tournament setup this week. And uh, I will see you next time. Of course, happy to do the playthroughs for you. Take care, everybody.